Right, we're good. We're rolling. <clears throat> All right. Welcome to the Old School RuneScape Podcast. I am Mitt Mad Cow. What's going on, boys? Riggs, as always. Did Is he, he muted? Mute <laughs> Did he mute himself? Bro? No way. Am I muted? Hey, it's me. Let's scope. go. <laughs> All right, we'll just keep going. Uh, so we have a very prominent guest today especially because of the length of time we have not made a podcast. We got to start out very strong. We have Mod Matt K, the ex J Mod, and uh, he's just been doing a lot of great stuff and he's been streaming, man. Glad to have you here. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. It's great to be back again. Yeah, we're, we're going to be covering a lot of stuff. Quick overview, though, before we get into a nice general Q&A, we're going to be covering Mod Trident. Matt has a lot of uh, very awesome information about Trident. He's been talking about that on streams, but we're going to be talking about that on the podcast. Of course, the botting problem going on in RuneScape, especially the Wilderness, every other boss, raids. I mean, we can keep going. We'll go into that deeper. Obviously, a big problem with that in ChatGBT. And of course, PvP and the state of PvP with Bounty Hunter just being released. But uh, first, Matt, what have you been up to? And do it. So I guess... Um... When did we do our last podcast? What, a couple of years ago now? Over a year. It's, been, it's over, a year. over a year. Over a year. Over a year. Over a year ago. So um, when I, I left Jagex, I joined a deep tech company um, that works with supercomputers, distributed computing, all that sort of stuff. And the whole idea was that you make massive simulations um, off the back of that. Um, and you can just make, you know, imagine you've got a RuneScape world, but you're not limited to 2,000 people in it. You can have 20,000 people, 200,000 people in it. It gives you that technology to allow massive, super big RuneScape worlds, is what it did. Um, so I worked with them for a few years, um, and I'm starting a new job very soon. Um, I've got a stream tomorrow where I'll be announcing more about that, which is quite exciting. So, uh, so I'm not going to tell you Link in the description. That. Wait, are you, yeah, go are you going stream, full time? Is that what this is? Full time content creation? You just partnered. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> yeah, oh, come on, though. Tom, bro. What are you <laughs> doing, man? <laughs> I, dude, I, I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm just, is it coincidence <laughs> he just got partnered? Dude, he's going to rip his shirt off. It's going to be like C9 or Phase or something. He got partnered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, okay. So, so I've been streaming for the last month. Um, partnered this week as well which is quite cool twitch finally gave in and uh, and gave me a partnership which is good so I they realized who he was finally yeah that's it that's it i think actually maybe mod wolf had something to do with that to be fair oh, but he wouldn't have okay. been, you know. um but yeah so so it's been it's been a good uh, a good uh, a good month of not working and getting plenty of stuff done which has been quite cool when uh, when you stream, what what content are you guys doing? Because I've seen a lot of memes of you clicking, and then there's some of you doing like five tier uh, wood cutting or maybe one handed. <laughs> they're stuff, they're, they're not memes. No, they're, they're no not memes. that's you. No, it's that's you. Me, yeah. I was, bro, it's, that's, the, that's like the best RuneScape meme ever. It's just it's just Matt just like kind of slobbed out. He's like proper like nonchalant. And then there's some dudes doing like 50 ticks in one click. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. But now we've been doing that. I've, been, I've, I've never got a 99 in RuneScape. Never got a 99. I've been playing oh. since 2004. Um, so we've been hunting down 99 um, fishing. Um, we're at 85 at the moment. So, yeah, we're practically there. I mean, let's be honest. Fishing um, and storage time, right? Sorry? The fishing and story time stream. Fishing and story time, because fishing is a lot more AFK, so I could talk a lot more. We've done Inferno a few times as well, so we've uh, we've done Inferno a couple of times. You have an Inferno cave? No, I've not got that far. No. Oh, got, bro, got to I was about to be like, it's um, okay. But uh, there's, I was I was aiming to do, because um, I wanted to go into Inferno, and I was aiming to get my fire cape, and I thought, well, that's at least three streams worth of work, uh, three streams worth of content to get my fire cape, my extra fire cape to do that. Did it first time, I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> now I've got the else. <laughs> so straight into Inferno after that. So um, there we go. That's mm, awesome. Okay, nice. okay. Yeah, man. I All mean, right. dude, times have changed so much. Like when you did your fire cape, I'm guessing you used like a blowpipe and stuff, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's blowpipe and yeah, just blowpipe to be frank. Yeah. I think people yeah. like. I I think sometimes we're so far like I don't know like because we're in the game all the time we forget how like items have came into the game that just make things so much easier like if you were to get a fire cape back in the day you're probably looking at using like a magic short bow maybe a carol's bow if you could afford one yeah. like a toxic blowpipe is just it's almost like a cheat code you know it makes your life so much easier indeed what's really interesting though 
is you know all the um the effort that Jagex put into dealing with the inferno cape sellers and if you buy an inferno cape infernal cape you'll get you know you lose Ooh. your cape and you'll get two weeks banned. we were doing exactly the same thing back when uh, jad came out so back in 2005 2006 the same problem was there people were selling fire capes and uh, we went after the people that were selling fire capes and we were banning the people who were uh, buying them so exactly the same problems come up what 15 years later um, same thing. Which yeah, is human nature amazing. doesn't change. You know? <laughs> History repeats is the most yeah. iconic and right quote on a large time scale and a short yeah. time scale. And talking about Inferno Capes, I uh, someone told me eighty percent. I don't know if it's true. Eighty percent of them were bot, bot, not botted, but bought in. And yeah. I was like, that, there's, that's not true. And I go to Bounty Hunter, and it's just a sea of Inferno kids. Yeah. <laughs> and these people are dog shit, bro. They are so <laughs> bad at PK. I'm thinking, yeah. there's yeah. no way everyone yeah. here has an Inferno kid. Dude, yeah. I, I've been doing a lot of BH on my one defense. Now, I'm going to tell you something, man. The amount of one defense pures with Infernal Capes that I've seen in the last two days there's is no insane. And as there's somebody no who has gone for a one defense Infernal Cape, I can single-handedly tell you that was the hardest hardest thing i've ever had to do in old school runescape in terms of like skill knowledge just everything and i didn't even get the cape <laughs> i didn't even get it like i'm on a break i'm on like a permanent break right now i'm gonna get it at some point no, it's so look, hard think... it's and like yeah. all the guys i'm fighting have zero kc in every single boss in the game and then just one kc and suck <laughs> yeah it's and fair it's to just... say like oh. the 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 one defense peers a lot of those are definitely bought because mm -hmm. it, it's it's several times harder than just doing a normal inferno cave easily yeah so it's crazy easily you you just need to know everything like you can't leave anything to chance because everything can basically one shot you on one defense so it's like you have to know how to scout the waves ahead you have to know where the jad spawns on whatever rotation the inferno is even on because then when the jad spawn it's like you know those little the little healers the 180s that heal the jad that, that's nothing for a main because you've got defense but when you're on a one defense pure those things are just fucking pummeling you like you're just there getting your head kicked in like they will just max on you constantly so you need to know how to like hug them behind jad you need to know where to stand where they spawn to stop them getting there and stuff it's like the amount of knowledge and just information you need just for every single wave is insane yeah, yeah you have to you have to learn everything and also some extra things yeah but um before you know before we like really go in depth in in, in the you know runescape topics i feel like a lot of viewers like probably haven't really played old school runescape during the time when mr matt k was you know the spokesperson essentially and and running the game like i i feel like uh, if you want to elaborate a bit more on what you 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 know your previous job role was for uh for mm. jagex a bit before we move on i think a lot of the newer viewers will probably be like oh wow okay this is a <laughs> this is someone special you know so yeah go if you would like go ahead first sure so um Back in 2005, my wife spotted in the local newspaper a job saying, do you want to work at Jagex in customer support? And uh, obviously we both played RuneScape at that point. So we were like, oh, Jagex are a thing. You know, we thought it was just a person making it rather than a company. We didn't even realize that. And uh, so my wife applied to work at Jagex and uh, she got an interview there and got a trial. And I uh, didn't get the job. When she came back, she was like, right, you've got to go and apply to work there now. So I'm like, um, so you have to do what your wife says. So I went and applied for Jagex. I was importing forklift trucks from China at the time, so a very different job. Hmm. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I applied for a job, got the job, was started in player support, uh, and then three months later moved into community management, which is where I worked up until 2014. Um, so that's almost 10 years, nine years in community management. Um, I started off, um, so I, I started off obviously working on RuneScape 2. Um, I then went to the publishing department after that, where we released games such as Ace of Spades, uh, War of Legends, uh, Carnage Racing, probably none of you even ever heard of that because it was that Not good. Um, <laughs> I only know of Arcanist. From a yeah, way I didn't, didn't release that one. Didn't release the good games, no, no. Uh, but a whole bunch of other games we released. And, um, and then um, I was sitting there and uh, the publishing department had spent its entire year's budget in six months. There were no real games coming out. And I'm like, this, this department is not going to last long. And Old School came out. So I went to my boss at the time and said, hey, can you get me the old school gig? I'd love to work on that because I know all about the game, know it better than anyone else because I played it for years when it was that old uh, back in 2007. And, you know, I 
um, I, I want to get out of this publishing deal. And uh, they said, yeah, sure, no problem. We moved me over to RuneScape, uh, to Old School RuneScape. Um, and at the time, I thought, you know, you could, uh, the com- I think the company believed this game wasn't really going to go anywhere. That, um, you know, RuneScape, the Old School RuneScape was going to last for six months before people would look at it and go, actually, RuneScape 3 is a much better game. Let's go play that one instead. Um, so it was almost like six months. Where do I want to work? Do I want to work in the publishing department, which is, you know, probably only got six months left, or do I want to work in the... Uh, um, uh, old school RuneScape, so I thought, you know, I'm going to work in old school RuneScape. Anyway, so um, did that. Then um, there was me, Ash, Dan, and Nexus when we first kicked off. Uh, us four working on it. The only four people on the, in the entire company that were, were um, uh, working on it. And fascinating, I was talking to MMG, actually, who was the CEO at the time, day before yesterday. Um, and you know, he said, he said, you know, when old school RuneScape came out, we saw you four guys working on it, and we were just like, these guys know what they're doing. Let's just leave them alone to get on with it. So we got left alone to do what we thought was right, and it seemed to work because the game just grew and grew and grew. Um, uh, and uh, and we just made the game as big as it could be. Yeah, I I ended up being the um, senior product manager for it. Um, so doing what Ash is doing now. Um, and I did that for about six years for the game. Um, and um, that was up until 2019 when I left. So that was what I did. So I brought out things such as um, our first major update, which was God Wars, um, the Dead Man mode stuff, so the eSport that we put together over it, um, Zaya, um, uh, the first raids, second raids as well. I think I was there for that. Some of the biggest quests we did as well. Um, and all that sort of stuff I, I pushed through. Um, up until yeah, up until 2019, mobile had just come out, and then it was time to do something different. So that's that's my history within uh, within uh, Jagex. 2019. It's like so a job interview. Four years. Four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah four so, years ago. Yeah. So just over four years ago. What was when you were doing that? You said were you a community manager when you got to Old School Runescape, or was it a different job title? Yeah. It was. So, so I was. I was. I think I was senior community manager by that point. Um, they gave me that role. And then I, um, all, all I did at that time was because we were left alone, there's almost like this, this gap. So I remember when we first started, right, we used to have all the senior people from the company come and sit in on our weekly meetings. So you'd have um, the head of RuneScape would turn up and every week somebody um, less senior would turn up and it just went down and down and down sort of the, the levels of, of seniority down the company until nobody turned up. And it just <laughs> left me, Ash, Dan and Nexus just sitting there going, well, no one cares let's do whatever we like and uh, we just cracked on with it and um, that's that's what made it work so what would what was like the day in the life of you back then like what was the job that you were actually like what was your day-to-day job when you had that role so i guess i guess it was you know what do the players want and they had all of us were looking at talking to the players all of us were trying to understand it. it's trying to understand all that different information come from different places and trying to make the right decision what does Ash need? What does Dan need? What does Nexus need in order to actually build the thing? So I was doing quite a fair bit of game design back then as well. What were we designing? I was trying to get ideas together and then I was reporting the stuff back to uh, the senior team as well. So as the numbers were coming in, I was saying, like, this is how many memberships we've got coming. This is how we're changing things. This is what we're doing. Um, and just keeping them appraised of what was going on. It felt like doing it to keep them off our back so we could actually do what we thought was right. Yeah. Um, an awful lot were in the very early days because we had no tools to do anything with. We had no development tools. We only could literally just change things in code, I think, um, back then. So there's very little we could actually do to actually give uh, updates to the game. And But one thing we realized is that we could give out all the rares in game and we could allow people access to rare items because obviously they weren't in the game and no one could get their hands on them. So it's like, right, how do we do this? So we created uh, a whole bunch of different events. And I remember there were some times where uh, I would be streaming these events. Um, uh, so that people would turn up to the streams, collect a party hat, and then go off with a party hat, and it was it was all quite quite good fun. I think we had um, you kill people, kill me in the wilderness. So I had a J mod account made, which was almost impossible to kill, and everybody would turn up and just absolutely try and muller me in the wilderness. Yeah, um, you know, hundreds yeah, those of were fun. Those J mod events, events were fun. Yeah. Those were, yeah. Uh, yeah. You would that's, just that's see people dying on the side. Like the mod busting yeah. streams were, were good too. Yeah. They need to bring that back, honestly. Oh, or like that would be so good. Uh, the bots like a, are so confident nowadays because there's no bot busting streams anymore just the comments uh, bot, through the yeah. busting stream i mean the whole bot busting stream was because we had no tools at all until jack mob joined uh jagex we had no tools whatsoever for bots in old school so it yeah. was like well, what what can we do it was like well let's at least show them we're thinking about it even if nothing else can happen so it was uh-huh. kind of like a case of the first block busting streams were me uh, bot, bot busting streams was me going in there and going right you look like a bot so i'm gonna ban you 
That was it. That was all we could do. And you'd have people standing there saying, oh, my God, I turned myself into a bot, walked around, pretended to be a bot, and I got banned. How dare you? <laughs> but now you it's, know, now it's you guaranteed. Now you know. you know. We now. need <laughs> that, though, with AI. And I know we're not getting the botting topic, but they yeah, cannot yeah, quick, quick one. find <laughs> out <laughs> who is botting. We need to just go yeah. over and go, oh, do you have 120 million range XP and one in all stats? ban right just common sense is what we need nowadays i I think i think my favorite one was one i think it was uh it was always it was either swain or aiza yeah it it was aiza yeah but it was or or goody or goody i I think this time it might have been swain and um yeah they built a world (laughs) which funneled all the bot accounts into and they were like every single account that you see is a bot and there were so many people watching the stream. And then some of the bots in games were watching the stream, so they were following him desperately, like, I'm not a bot and I promise. <laughs> the, like, like the actual it, owners lock back into like, yo, it was so, it was so funny, man. Yeah, when they spawn so him funny. into an island and they tried to log out because they were watching uh, the stream. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. Oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, we need, we need to bring that back. It's like, I think the trust, uh, you know, this is quick, quick talk. I think the trust... In, in anti-cheat right now is at all-time low you know so uh yeah i mean that's a great segue unless you guys have any more q no, no, no. I, I have one quick trying. question quick question yeah. about uh the general work life of you know when the uh, mod mac k ran the show here mod nexus now we've mm. heard you know we've heard lots about obviously reach um and who yeah like who was nexus you know who, who was nexus i mean yeah, obviously he, we know um... mod ash god ash is still around but yeah mod nexus yeah Modern X, I'm trying to think of what he did. He didn't stay for long. So I, I think he was with us for about six months in the old school team. And then he went off to work back on RuneScape 3. So what you got to remember from a developer and an artist point of view, old school RuneScape is not an attractive thing to work on. Um, yeah. The code isn't super advanced. If you want to work on the you know, the, That's real. the latest technology, <laughs> doing the latest cool stuff, old school is not, right. not your thing. Um, if you want to make a great game, which is a you know, great retro feel and use you know, hard technology, then yeah old school works but not everybody wants to do that and i mean our nexus isn't even at jagex anymore he's left a um, long time i don't even know where he is now mm-hmm. um, but he's uh um but he was he was there uh, he worked for us about six months i think it must have been um ash can probably remember better than i can for how long he was with us i guess he worked closer with ash because he's like yeah. the content people exactly yeah he just disappeared you know like i don't even know there was a nexus working yeah no he, he was never he never wanted to be in the limelight at all so it was worried why you really uh, heard him. I see. Um, so we Makes sense. Sat back in the background. I mean, he left before we even started live streaming. Um, so I think, um, I mean, imagine, I don't think he would ever have gone on a live stream. Um, about then, but Makes a lot of sense. Very, very, very nice chap. Um, yeah. yeah. That's, that's really interesting, that dynamic. So obviously it's a little bit different now because the old school team is so much bigger. Like it's... I mean, you started, was it four or five people that you had at the very beginning? I think it was four of us, yeah. Four. I and, four. and now I think Jagex, like old school RuneScape, the team has at least 30, 30 people that are working on it, right? It could be even more than that. I'm not too it sure. It still feels really small. It's not, though. The quality inside the I, game. I mean, like, compared to what it was, but my, my point is, is like back then, like, you didn't really have a choice. Like, if you were a part of the old school dev team, chances are you were going to be going on the podcast at some point. Whereas now, like, I swear there's like tons of JMOD's names that I've never seen before. I, I wouldn't be able to identify them. Um, and they're very much like behind the scenes as it's got bigger. Yeah, when we recruited people, we deliberately said, you know, you're going to be on a live stream. And one of the questions I always asked was, if I put you in front of all the players in, on a video, what are they going to say about you? What are they going to say about your appearance? Because there should be no doubt in anybody's mind what the community is like and uh, it, it basically showed people whether they actually believed that they could sit in front of a camera or not. in fact we had some uh, okay i'll tell you the story because why not mm-hmm. um the uh the first time i introduced jed to the community i was on a live stream it was his first week and we always made sure somebody started their first week they were on the q a um i i always thought jed looked like justin bieber right <laughs> so i sat on the live stream and i said to the to the to the people watching, I said, I think he looks like someone famous. Who do you think he looks like? Uh, Jed had a rather oh, severe no. haircut, you know, a rather severe um, haircut across here. <laughs> um, so they all compared him to Hitler. And, uh, oh, <laughs> oh my god! 
Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay, that so, was so left field, man. And he was oh, never on wait, again. So, Matt, what was, what was the reason? Like, obviously, I, I kind of feel like I know the answer, but would you be able to go into detail why you felt it's so important to have all of the old school RuneScape J mods be known by you the know. community? Why, why you have that level of transparency? Just a huge one thing I learned about um, working on old school was that if you're able to build a relationship with your players, because the whole concept of old school was because that relationship had been destroyed between Jagex and the players. EOC had caused a massive degradation in that relationship. And the whole point about it was um, old school comes out, um, hopefully, it rebuilds that relationship. And to me, if you can show yourself as a person, you can show yourself as somebody who cares, and you can show yourself as someone who's going to have conversations with people and have conversations with people, and that just builds that relationship because they connect with you, they understand you, they feel as if you're a real person who cares about the same things they do. And that was that was what I was trying to do all the way through my time at old school, yeah, to make sure that was always key, um, because it's so easy to to get into a position where you will stare at your computer screen and forget that there's people on the other end of the computer screen playing the game. As soon as you forget that, then that's when you start making mistakes. That's when you start making the wrong decisions because you're forgetting that there's a person there who has opinions, who has needs, who has wants, and your your job is to make sure that you understand them and do that. If that permeates everything in the business, then that makes life so much easier. Yeah. So would I be right in thinking then that that was a choice or a decision that you came up with? It wasn't like forced upon you by the higher ups to try and regain favor to the uh, company. No, I, 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 I mean I wouldn't say it was me. Um, I would say it was us. Um, it was you know, I think we all knew we had to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why you know we had Dan, we had myself, we had Ash who took the forefront in that. And it was scary because we'd never done anything like this before. We had the community team with us as well. So, I mean, at the time, uh, Mod Jane was in charge of the community team. Um, and she was very much up for that as well. How do we connect better with our players? How do we talk better with our players? So it, it was, I, I wouldn't say I did it, but, you know, I, I made sure it happened and continued to happen. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think it was something which we knew it needed to happen. So I think it's great. Yeah, I, think. I think you see, yeah, I... you see a lot of games like other MMOs that do the same thing. Um, or at least they they try to do it. I they, they I, try. I think they try mm. to do it, but I think that sometimes it doesn't come across as uh, sort of natural and down to earth. Whereas the old school yeah. team definitely did. Yeah, yeah. I've Have seen, you seen the I've Blizzard seen stuff, bro. Like yeah. they try to be so personable, but no one trusts Blizzard anymore. And it's, yeah, yeah. What's that game that they did that was like hella pay to win, and then like, people were just no. mad, you know? Oh, like yeah. they what were was just it? Mad. Diablo Immortal. That was it. Yeah, immoral. Yeah. They call it immoral. <laughs> just, a, just a little side tangent, bro. Yeah. Did you guys like when they were releasing that? And they were like, "What? what they is it. Diablo three? What's going on?" And they're like, "Yeah, it's gonna be on phone." And they're like, "And it's huge audience." They're like, is this yeah, an April so Fool's funny. joke? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, I, I just watched that. There, like, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> dude they were not they were not happy like you could tell they were like confused whether a closet or not you know i was like that's you know, what happens like, when you don't know your core audience and yeah. you're just trying to make money i mean it, it's actually crazy when you look at world of warcraft like the only reason i know anything about wow is probably because i watch Asmin gold and obviously he is effectively like he is like effectively guy. like an addicted player who's very passionate about mm. the game the community and he's very concerned and it's so fucking weird watching their problems because I'm like, I can relate to this so well from like pre-EOC. Like everything yeah. they're going through is like pre-EOC, but they've completely dropped the ball because they brought out mm. WoW Classic, which is effectively old school RuneScape, but for WoW. And the mm. whole point in it was to get away from like the mic microtransactions, you know, all, all of the stuff that Bring people just didn't want to have to deal with. And now they've literally just put microtransactions back into classic. Uh, and it's, that's, that's, that's worrying. I, heard, it's, I don't it's think worrying, classic though. is g hey, doing man, well in the Blizzard, wild that's side. On you. You know? No, yeah. I, like, interesting I don't think thing so. about um, interesting thing. I had a conversation with one of the CEOs of uh, Jagex, and I'm, I'll go tell you which one. Uh, but he had a meeting with um, a high up person in Blizzard, and it was it was a it was a industry meeting. So all the high ups from all the different MMO companies were there. And he went up to this person and he said, "So, would you have done WoW Classic if it wasn't for old school RuneScape?" And I bet you want to know the answer now, don't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> the answer was, uh, "Well, it would. It certainly made our decision a lot easier." 
Mm, yeah. um, so uh, if it wasn't for old school RuneScape, WoW Classic wouldn't have been a thing. I don't think you'd have seen. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I think it it was obvious that it was inspired, you know, heavily, mm. right? Mm. But like the you know the whole live streaming thing and the whole connecting with you know your your play base thing. I think I think Jagex. I mean, because I was around, right? When Old School first came out, I was there for, like... I, I used to, like, watch, like, all the, you know, the the uh, live streams for, from, you know, Jagex on Twitch. And they used to... It, it would have, like, a really big attendance, right? There would be, like, mm. like always a thousand plus people all the time watching it. And, and honestly, it was, like... It felt like something different happened, you know, during those times. I think something really amazing happened during those times. Like, because, you know, a really small team, but but everybody was so interested in the whole process yeah. of you know the j mods doing their thing yeah and I think yeah i think yeah i think what's changed is back when we first started doing it there were three of us who had all the information about old school runescape we knew what we could say we knew what we couldn't say we could make the decisions ourselves and we could we were comfortable debating in front of a camera with thousands of people watching a, a decision um we were, we were comfortable doing that um now you don't have that because there's what 25 people 30 people 50 people however many work on old school runescape you haven't got that kernel of people who make all the decisions who know the decisions who know all the information yeah. so you're always sitting there on those meetings now on those uh, q a's now going actually i'm not entirely sure what i'm allowed to say about this mm. whereas mm, at the time true. beforehand when even even when there were seven of us we can make those decisions and we'd be like right this is what we're gonna do um and that's that's the difference i think now and it's yeah. it's just part and parcel of how it, how, the, how the business has grown and it's, it's not a surprise yeah but i what i wanted to say like uh you know in part uh to continue what i was saying is is that like i think it set a, a really good precedent though because i think runescape is still one of the i guess one of the most robust games out there you know like it's it's like reputable you know like compared to yeah. most other games that are way more popular uh it, it doesn't have that community connection, you know, when you when when people, you know, from Jagex, like when some of the more notable mods, you know, make videos uh, on their YouTube or like live stream a big topic, like a new skill, like a lot of people come and watch. Whereas I feel like I see, yeah, like, like, you know, the Blizzard stuff, I see all, a lot of these yeah. other bigger companies, they try to do that stuff, you know, and it just like usually it's it's like not it doesn't feel the same. It you doesn't know? it, feels it doesn't like, feel authentic. Doesn't have heart. I don't think. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't I mean, think it feels authentic at all. I, I have a solid uh, example because it feels like what Rice just said is completely true. In where the gaming sector is starting to finally notice community trumps all. Right, you could have a big company, you know, ties yeah. to China, all this stuff. It doesn't matter as long as you have that community. You just keep going, keep building. That example would be dark and darker. And sorry for the side tangent, but they got hit by a lawsuit from a big One of the Chinese worst company. Game companies. Was it All Nexon? The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they Nexon had a, you know, Maple Story, those kind of games. They got hit a lawsuit. They got kicked off Steam. Uh, they got raided. All their information was taken. Uh, hmm. None of the lawsuits are stuck so far. Dark and Darker still having to deal with the aftermath. Still not on Steam. Their Discord is just pumping, bro. It is has it? a 30 minute delay timer and it just is moving. Mm. 30 minute delay moving. This game's kicked off Steam. It's a free to play, community based driven game, bro. And that might be the future we're looking at is just community based ran games. Those big companies are going to have a bit of an advantage there, monet, you know, money wise, but I, it's more, it's yeah, yeah, it's shit. more grassroots. So mm -hmm. yeah. here, here's a question for you, Matt, then. So do, do you think that, you know, with the success of old school RuneScape, and that is clearly what we've seen, right? The game's grown. The game's grown. It's got more successful. They've taken on more J mods and so forth. Do you think that it, whenever I think of that, I always think of a country, uh, a company just like slowly becoming more and more corporate. But do you think that that's always the outcome? And like, how could Jagex kind of keep those, um early roots that were sort of made from the original team and continue that and the authenticity even with the growth and success because i feel like you're right it's like as the team grows bigger less people know everything that's happening so it's like what can i talk about what am i allowed to share it's like how do you think that jagex can kind of keep on top of that if there is a way of doing so because I, I i don't really know so there is every uh, Every company goes through the same sort of life cycle. Um, and they hit a point where 
once they've realized they've got something that they can lose, then oversight comes in. And that's corporate oversight. So that's from lawyers, that's from financial people uh, within the company. And that happens in every company. As soon as you realize that you've got something that's worth tens of millions of pounds. I mean, what was the last time the um, last value Jagex sold for? 400, 500 million, something like that. Yeah, I mean, that's, why, that's half a billion pounds or dollars worth of money. That's something to lose. So obviously oversight is, is going to be huge. Um, they're now owned by the Carlisle Group, I believe. So, you know, there's going to be uh, even more money involved um, now. Um, so that's something that you're not going to avoid. Can Jagex get back to how it used to be? Um, probably not, but I don't think they should. Um, but I do think there is stuff they could do to reignite some of that um, community passion, which I think has, has, has disappeared over the years. Yeah. Um, one of the big things I look at, you know, one of the most frustrating things I find about um, Jagex and RuneScape, uh, particularly old school RuneScape, is the potential to do um, amazing things. And uh, before I left, I pitched an idea which, which even over these last four years has still hit me as this is the obvious big thing that the company needs to do if they want to take the game further. Um, and that is... Uh, uh, player-owned servers. So private servers are a thing. Um, they've always been popular. Why can you not buy a server from Jagex and say, this is my server and I want to develop my own content on it. I want to create my own bosses. I want to create my own raids. I want to create my own skills. I want to create my own assets, armor, whatever, quests, whatever, and be able to um, have your friends come and play your content. So if you look at where the gaming market's going as a whole, you look at the uh, three biggest games in the world right now. So Minecraft, uh, Roblox, and uh, Fortnite. Exactly. They're all doing that. Exactly. And Jagex have got such an opportunity there to say, hey, we've got such a passionate community that if if you were to give any one of you three, here's your server, here's a bunch of tools where you could develop stuff, you would go and create something straight away so you could get your community involved in it. All the big influencers would do it. You'd get more influencers come out because let's be honest with you, you might all be very good at talking to a camera, but I bet you ain't very good at doing games uh, design. No. Um, and so a whole bunch of new influencers will come out. And if you could do it to the level where you could then charge people to access your content and you could start building businesses around what uh, Jagex has created. And that is just such, that, that, is where the, that is where the world's going. And it's so frustrating that you know I was saying this you know, five years ago. I mean, and uh, it's still not gone gone anywhere. It's it's isn't, nuts. Isn't that basically what happens with uh, Dota or League of Legends? Like the entire game <laughs> is based off of a mini game that was made inside of Warcraft. I think Warcraft Three or Warcraft one of the really? Warcraft yeah. games. Yeah, somebody yeah. made it as like a mini Dota. game, and it right. became yeah. so popular. Yeah. I think it may have been Dota, and then League of Legends like took it, yeah. simplified it, and made it into that. Yeah. So it's like that all came from like a mini game within like a almost a private server, I guess. Like someone yeah, made it's, it. it's it's exactly that. Yeah. There's so much. I mean, if you want to make a game where the community own the content so much, you allow them to make the community. You oh, sorry, you allow them to make the content. It's as simple as that. You know, that to me, old school RuneScape was the most community driven game. Should always be the most community driven game. And if you really want to do that allow people to make content you allow your community yeah. to make the content i mean then and there that, would yeah. there would be like permanent effectively there could be permanent like dead man modes which have been player made you could go into like skill spec <laughs> server and it's just like you can kill everybody everywhere and you know be something like exactly that. exactly yeah i think yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be easy uh... to do let's be honest with you i mean technology wise you'd have these guys pulling their hair out trying to make it work but for something that big and something that important that can grow the company so much, um, or I believe can. I mean, it's their decision, not mine these days. Um, mm, yeah. That, that, that you'd, you'd make it work. Yeah. I, you're not the first person to say that. I've seen people speak about that on Twitter and stuff, Soup, actually. Soup does that with his uh, big series, right, where he has his own server that was given to him for a period of time. I might be wrong mm. about that. Yeah, know? I think they have been given servers, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. they're taking that first step. And and when you compared it to Roblox and Fortnite, bro, that's such nowhere a great close, but man. no, no, yeah. it really. I mean, no, I mean, like in terms of what they have right now, you know, because so, I think they just give out worlds. Yeah, they that, do. No, you is, build on top of it, and then those become their own game, and they become very yeah, popular. Yeah. And then Fortnite. Oh, well, like yeah, they, we don't have that modification though. You know, like they do. <laughs> you know, they can. It just seems like the games that are succeeding yeah. though don't stop building and growing, and that also pertains to their community. Like the things Fortnite is doing, like you could just kind of dissect it and have a whole class on like video game uh, yeah. mastery or whatever, because yeah. they are just 
I like I don't like it, but I hate to say they're doing everything right. Yeah, but well, yeah, I know. I definitely see like you know crazy maybe potential popularity boosts for like a uh, like a fully sandboxed RuneScape, I guess. You know. Yeah. It's like that's yeah. I mean, the main thing well, separating you would kill off it, private yeah. servers on the side. <laughs> Yeah, it would all come here. Pretty much be gone. I would like. I'd love yeah. to see some genuine like pushback on the idea of it because I feel like, like a gut feeling of mine tells me that some people would be like, "Oh, that's just going to split the community even more." But then again, there's yeah, so see, I, I I hear that as well quite yeah. a lot. Because I mean, yeah, I spend yeah, time in one. my streams quite a lot. And I'm like, well, does it really split the community? Right, a community as the tops. You've got two thousand people in a world. Um, you could talk across as many worlds as you like um the community spreads across it you're not all doing the same content you're all doing your own thing yeah um how does it add to the, how does it take away from what's already there as long as you can communicate across the servers then suddenly it's like well i could talk to people i want to yeah um and you know i can i can say they i, I could build a community um as well and one community of i don't know how many people they got playing at the moment what any one time two hundred thousand people um uh, a community of two hundred thousand people is not really a real community. I mean, more than fifteen people you can't really engage with anymore. Yeah. So you need to have these small areas of community that fit together that have the bigger umbrella of RuneScape over the top. I mean, something exactly. I learned recently from uh, the Fresh Start rules they did, which I never hear good things about, but it was one of the fucking mm. best times I've had. Um, was a lot of the dudes that were in that server were people that just played the servers when they come out, the time gated servers. So they play leagues, mm. they play dead man mode, and they're just mm. they're just there. They're just like, man, I I will play any kind of time gated server. I just need another dead man mode. I need another leagues. Yeah. And I, I think that it would add if anything. I think it would add more than yeah. it would subtract because there's a lot of people that just either get burnt out, they don't know what to do, they've got no sense of direction, or they're just like watching us content creators play and they're not playing themselves. Whereas like, mm. if somebody's made a server where there's some like really fun activity going on, or say there's like tons, hundreds of hundreds of different servers where you can just hop in and see what people have built, like mm. that in itself would be a perfect like time sink for Indeed, those yeah. people. And they might find something oh. that they really enjoy. Exactly, skill specs right now, he's got a Rust server up and running. Yeah, um, yeah, he's invited yeah. people to play. It, it'd just be that, you know. Here's yeah. the thing: I've done a whole bunch of different stuff. Everybody come in and, and do your thing. Yeah, um, the amount of content you guys could create out of it would be amazing. You could just do anything you wanted to. I mean, think um, think about like um like you're talking about soup, right, with the Gilmore Games. Hmm. It's like you mm -hmm. could literally make like your own world where it's like you're gonna spawn in. It's gonna be like a tournament. It's gonna be a PvP battle royale or something like that. You could you could create that as long as they gave you the tools to do so. Like, there's no reason why not. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it would be fucking amazing. I'd love it if they did it. And I'll tell you what I would do if they did it. I would literally make Tarkov. I've been talking about this for ages. I'd straight <laughs> up, I'd make the fucking Tarkov minigame for RuneScape and just prove how fucking good it is and be like, look, yeah. there's more players on my server, Jagex, than all of yours. Fucking put it in the game. <laughs> that's that's the cool part about this idea, right? Because everything starts as an idea. Look at Iron Man, right? People are just doing that for fun. Now it's become people's careers, right? Look at Oda Block's group Iron Man. It's, it's evolved. So if anything, having servers ran by the community wouldn't, divide the community but it would grow parts of the community that could bolster even a bigger group of people right to get around that idea like bronze man mode iron man mode hardcore iron man all these things were ideas that were built upon and now we have like high scores let's play look at we got rice yeah. cup down there dude look at look at where he's living all of that based on iron man bro can you Wait, what that? you want about you want about his look room? at that <laughs> yeah, yeah everything you've got bro is iron man right that was that was born from that idea uh, right oh, yeah, and my now bank, you are yeah. living the career of an iron man like yeah i guess that, so. yeah mm. it's hard it, no saying. one really thinks about it like that but it was literally just an idea mm. i guess mm. you know my input on that is um I, I it might be inevitable you know that we we uh we will see some fully you know uh sandboxed runescape you know where people can do that because i feel like uh you know bring back maple story you, you said randomly there even even nexon the one of the most greediest game companies Slimiest. out there they're, they're even they are doing a sandbox version of maple story where you can create mm -hmm. the maple story in your way in whatever way you wish using their ass using the assets of the game and mm -hmm. stuff like that 
So, yeah. I mean, like, if, if one of the most greediest game companies that runs, you know, for a while, one of the most popular MMOs is doing it, I think uh, eventually it'll probably happen. Because, yeah, I, I, I feel like RuneScape's probably one of the best mm. MMOs to have that capability. Although I'm, I don't know the full consequences. Well, I mean, I'm a little less. Just look at private yeah. servers. Personally. Look yeah. at private servers and how successful yeah. they were before RuneScape came out. Yeah. It's like you already, yeah. you already I think see them have it. a successful business plan. They're just I, doing it illegally. Why not just add that uh, on your own I roster? I think the thing with old school, like with Jagex, they they have like this thing where they've kind of shown time and time again they leave stuff until it's almost too late in quite a lot of yeah. situations, mm -hmm. and that's concerning because. You're right, like, they have definitely missed a lot of golden opportunities in the past, just due to whatever reason, and it's like they could have jumped on something and tried it at least, but like, you know, I feel like sometimes they've had a tendency to leave stuff a little bit too late, and I'm thinking about, like, like this was a different time, but like, EOC and stuff like that, it's like, the community were screaming for them not to go ahead with the update, yet they did it anyways, you know? It's like, the, the mm -hmm. writing was always on the wall, they just didn't read it, but I, it's one of those to be honest with like, you, yeah. EOC you... was the best update they could have done. Mm -hmm. EOC is okay. probably one of the best the, updates. It was their wake-up call, I guess. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why, right? So, if they had not done EOC, or EOC had been a marginal success, not as big a failure as it was, what would the company look like now? You'd have one game, RuneScape 2, um, RuneScape 3, um and it would have not very many players because that decline has continued it's not i mean they've done a good job in maintaining where it is and they've, they've done a good job in, in uh, minimizing that decline of what it is but had old school runescape not have existed um i don't think jagex would exist now and old school saying? runescape only exists because of eoc yeah so if you look yeah. at um if you look at uh what happened to the company shortly afterwards so 2012 eoc came out 2013 old school runescape came out there was a massive sudden increase in players when Old School RuneScape came out. They all started leaving straight away. Um, but within two years, you suddenly had a really healthy company because you had a company that was I making the money. Um, yeah. You had two games instead of one game. You had um, a, a strong, a strong uh, revenue stream, two strong revenue streams coming in. And off the back of that, they were able to sell the company for $600 million to a Chinese company, which, put that back into perspective, had never been done before. Selling Chinese companies into the West was not so much of a problem, but selling a Western company to a Chinese company was was very difficult. Um, and again, at the time when they were selling it, um, they were making sure it was going to a company which was actually going to preserve Chagex as an entity rather than um, destroy the entity. So they could have sold it to someone for eight, like EA, for example. And had oh, they have done God. that, then Jagex yeah. would just have, you know, they'd just moved everything in house to the EA studios and that would be it. Matt, you know, can, you, would have can you explain bit. something to me? Because, like, it really baffles me. How did Jagex at the time of the EOC think it was a good fucking idea? Like, did they not play the game? Like, I genuinely don't understand, like, how any of the people I, worked at Jagex at that Matt point in time. Like, how could they have, like, been players of the game yeah. and thought, oh, this is a good idea? Let's just completely so, change it to something yeah. else. Like, I don't... So the different perspective is what's the game going to be in the future rather than what is the game now. So yeah. I think the way they were looking is, right, we need the game to compete with these other things. We're losing players. How do we change the game significantly to gain players? Um, and to do that, you can't really listen to your existing player base because um, they're not the people you're targeting with it. Yeah. It's like, right, we've got a whole bunch of players who we know are never going to leave no matter what we do. We could turn everything into pink ponies and people would still keep playing because they've invested so much into it. Um, but what we need to do is target these people who are not coming in. Uh, without bringing in new people, you're not growing the game. If you're not growing the game, your company's getting smaller and you basically your company's going to die at some point if you just can't keep, keep doing that. Um, I think the mistake that was made for EOC was once they realized that the current player base was not going to uh, like it. They almost stuck their heads in the sand and said, "Right, we're gonna we're going to let somebody else take responsibility to this, and just you know nobody else paid any interest." I mean, I remember th back in back at that time going, "Right, if we want to get the community on board with this, we've got to do things to make them understand it." It's almost fear that's stopping them liking it. So they don't really understand what it is. They don't know how they're going to use it. They don't know how they're going to interact with it. 
Um, how do we get that closer so when it does come out, they understand much more about it? How do we get that information out to them? So I put several ideas across at the time, and you know, none of them went anywhere. And it was almost it felt like people just stuck their heads in the sand and said, right, we're going to do it, and then it'll be fine. And obviously it wasn't. However, <laughs> if they hadn't have done it, um, like I said, uh, old school wouldn't have existed. Yeah. Uh, in which case, you know, none of us would be talking today if uh, if they hadn't have done it. Happy accidents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, indeed, it was a happy accident, and you know, I would love to think it was planned, but that's that's some next level not. planning if they've thought about that. That would be quite and, and that's why I'm so like, you know, sometimes I sound like a downer just talking about like just criticizing certain things that happen in the game because I just I real a lot of people don't realize how lucky we are that this mm. game is around, you know, because like, <laughs> I realize that. That's why I'm like, you know, certain things I feel like it it, it needs to be done better, or else if we go if we ever make it back to that problem again i don't know if we're gonna get lucky a third time right like a second time so yeah, yeah honestly but yeah that's there's it's no, crazy there's no second time bro. yeah this that is, was a miracle <laughs> right, it was a miracle that like you they literally had a backup state and they it was a miracle that like the the community was so uh, you know like they were so fervent on trying to bring back like a, a version that they loved you know that kind of thing it was like yeah all those things came together you know like is it like a, do you think it's a case of like distance makes the heart grow fonder where it's like because it was taken away from us we were like we need it and we need it more than ever <laughs> it's like we need it nah, back right because now. i feel like i feel I'm, i feel like a lot of other games didn't come back you know like they're like ju they're just gone now you know no no like, what, what, no what i'm saying is because because the game that we love turned into eoc and then into runescape free and there was no other variation for us to play it's like there was just nothing like i remember filling like what was it like a year or two years i played every fucking mmo that existed i played mm. eve online yeah. world of warcraft i played fucking uh a game called rift i played loads of mmos i can't even remember the name of i played like league of legends Long rift. and i just played those games and almost just went through like the like through the phases just mm. like i wasn't like in it i was just doing it to fill that void that was it. I was, it was like really sad, and then eventually I was just like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna go go outside and do something with my life." Mm -hmm. But like, I I feel like that kind of probably does throw into the formula for why and how successful old school RuneScape's been. But like, I mean, when you think about old school RuneScape and like the way things have gone and how it started and stuff, it's like it's still doing incredibly well. Like as somebody who's played the game now for like over fifteen years, probably coming up to twenty, it's like. I'm still amazed by the updates they keep bringing out. Like, the way that they've been able to push the boundaries with, like, the game mechanics, the bosses, with all the limitations they have. It's like they've managed to do magical stuff with the game, but there's one downside. Shit takes ages to come into the game. And I think that that void of time, where it can take, like, up to two years, if not longer, like, the TOB being released, and then TOA, wasn't that, like, five years? for a new raid it's like it's too big a, an amount of time like sure the updates are fantastic but there needs to be something in the means the meanwhile for the players to do where they can just occupy themselves and i feel like the idea of making player owned servers and stuff like that Perfect. could possibly fit in there quite well yeah, i feel like it could it would cover a lot of fields right it covered the time uh it, it could bolster new communities i mean content like, think about them paying for Facebook ads versus them just letting people do the advertising for them, which is more successful, right? Obviously, the latter of the choice. So it could be literally that one thing they need that just keeps it steady and even, like you said, in between those updates. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I do love what they've done with the game, and I think they're doing a phenomenal job. I really do. Mm. I love that they're no, also... They're also keeping up uh, appearances on stream. They still like are introducing new J mods and stuff, even though the team's growing and stuff. It's just a case of content takes a long time to come out. And I'm not complaining about that because I would rather have good content come out than shit content. So it's okay. But there does need to be like something in between, whether that's leagues or dead man mode or whether that's like player owned servers. Like, sure, there might be a lot of time that goes into the development of that kind of stuff, but it's like the outcome is that you have a happy community. Also, they need to bring back, like, RuneFest. They need to bring back RuneFest. Mm -hmm. They need to start doing, like, events and stuff, putting those things on, because I think they're also 
very big for the community and keeping morale up. You know, I think it brings the community together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, dude. It, you we think it's time, boys? Yeah, we yeah, talked a lot about positive things over, overall. I think Rice. it's time to talk about the more spicier portion. Honestly, we're gonna have to timestamp this, all right, immediately. So, uh, sorry <laughs> if it, it, you know, if you were waiting to like get into the the, the title topics within the first ten minutes, I'm sorry. You know, yeah, like, it's my fault. We, I don't shut up. <laughs> that's okay. I think we had some really good convos overall. Yeah, you know, yeah. so we I can think it's stop worth it. it. Worth yeah, it was the worth wait, it. Bro. I that hope you guys awesome enjoyed. Job. Yeah, enjoy what we got so far. But yeah, we, we're gonna cover the three things that we're that we're supposed to cover, right? I think uh, Mint's gonna Mint and you know Mr. Matt's gonna really uh, lead us the way with the Trident topic because I feel like it. You know, it's some crazy like you know crazy crazy uh, topic that easily me or or Rexy can misconstrue so we'll let the two experts handle it i'm gonna just listen on this give one us an there. overview of what happened man let's run, run it. it through okay brother. so first before i get in the overview obviously there's always what we would call black swan events in old school runescape hugely dramatic crazy does not make a great splash in the game sector events two. yeah maybe we'll do a podcast covering all of those events right my jet and, and the ladder here but I'll let you guys know what's going on with my Trident at the moment. The best I can. Correct me in the comments, or maybe Matt can correct me if I get something wrong. Uh, but it all started. This drama started when Oda got target banned with 31 bill, I believe, on his account from a two-year-old uh, penalty. You say guy. offense, right? Offense, you should call right. it offense. Two-year-old two offense finally happened now. Trident knew... Right, because they were talking that he had 31 bill on him. So it was very weird and very coincidental. And that all lined up to when Oda started his own DMing clan due to the dual arena being permanently banned. You have to DM now in PvP worlds and such. And that is a very sketchy area in its own nature. And then comes in Stella, right? And all of this information, by the way, is just kind of word of mouth from Oda and his situation and the DMing clans. And then we have a big old blog i guess you can call it on stella's discord where she goes over her own events which pretty much means she met up with trident got banned by trident ended up doing some batman robin teaming where she would go undercover in these dming clans and then shut them down from the inside out where they would crumble like edm and uh that's how they got to know each other in that relationship apparently dating is what stella would say and then when oda block got his own dming clan set up that week and everything kind of went down and that's how the drama kind of went outside of the runescape community where asmund gold would talk about it and next thing you know my trident's getting investigated for some whatever reason by jagex and that case is kind of ran cold so we're not sure if trident has been doing things outside of his bounds for his job or maybe stella's over exaggerating the story but all we know is that they are looking into trident due to all of this uh drama going on so first yeah. off matt uh did i get any of that correct and what are your thoughts about this situation yeah, yeah i mean i, th I think that's, that's a pretty good uh, overall thing of it um the i mean the, the key thing to bear in mind here is the only information that's out in the community comes from two people stella and odablock yeah so immediately you can sit there and go you could probably ignore most of what they're saying <laughs> They're all each other. personally um, uh, involved in it, so oh, they're all yeah. going to have their own biases. So you can't take anything they say as being accurate, gospel, or the absolute truth. So you've got to look sort of beyond that to understand what's going on. So a lot of people ask me. Um, uh, I mean, I love this drama; it's great because um, it drove so many viewers to my streams. It's brilliant. <laughs> so I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant, and I, I had people coming in, you know, ten times an hour saying, "What do you think about it, Matt?" I'm like, <laughs> "Well." And Are you getting annoying? The... Sorry? <laughs> but, but like, when you're at a point where you're like, you know what, I'm just going to make a command for this. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I, I thought about it, but I was like, can't be asked to type that much. Uh, um, yeah. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know Trident. I've never met him. Um, he joined after I left, so I have no idea who he is. Um, but the, the key question to me was, what would you have done if you were there when this went on? And I was like, well, it, it's, what I'd have done is what's happened. Um, if I was in charge of RuneScape at the time, I'd have gone to Trident's boss and said, hey, can you check his work to make sure there's nothing dodgy going on? Now, everything any JMod does at Jagex is 100% tracked. Everything that is, is, is completely known, and you can see every action they ever take on anything. So there was no doubt 
in my mind, that if he was doing some dodgy stuff that he shouldn't have been doing, then um, he would have been fired very, very quickly. I mean, we don't know if he has been fired or not, and we'll get into that in a minute anyway. Um, but, um, but yeah, so the first thing I'd have done would be I would have gone to his boss and said, because he wasn't the boss of the anti-cheat team. He's only a senior anti-cheat person. He's not the head or the lead or the VP of customer support. Um, so he's not that senior other than not the most junior level, as it were. So I'd have gone to his boss and said, can you just check his work, make sure everything's legit? And they would have gone through a complete log of everything that he's done and said, yes, that's all That's all fine. He's done He's done technically the correct thing in each instance. A few things maybe not quite right, but you know nothing to worry about. And then the other thing I'd have asked, I said, right, what's the relationship with Stella? Because that's the, that's the key thing uh, to me. And you know the relationship, by, by what I mean about that, is not his personal relationship with them. I mean, they could be off behind the bike sheds, yiffing till the cows come home. I honestly don't care about that. That's a that's a it's up to them. I mean, Jagex has got no right to say to anybody who they can see, who they can't see, what their relationships are like outside of work. There's there's no um, area in um, uh, UK law to allow them to have any sort of involvement in. That. Um, and I saw Asmon Gold talk about he should be fired straight away, but I don't think he's aware of the uh, laws in the UK, which which mean you can't just fire somebody because you have a. a you don't like them you've got to have a reason to fire them and there's only six reasons in the uk that you can actually fire a person and none of them would fall in this anyway but anyway um so uh so that personal relationship doesn't matter um the probably to me the most um maybe uh unwise move would have been to have a public uh um, professional relationship between the two because he was appearing in her clan chat i believe or her discord mm -hmm. chat and that to me would have been something i would have been like look that's not a good thing to do that just the just the visuals at that point it just doesn't look good um so we need to stop that and if it is really an undercover um as you said a um a, a batman robin thing um then let's just keep it so that they don't see that that and jagex have got any involvement in that um so that's that's what I'd have asked to happen, and that feels like what has happened. Um, so they've run an investigation. Uh, they said they've run an investigation. That investigation is over now. I can't believe for a second it takes any longer than a week to do anything. So I'd very very much doubt um, uh, anything more that's happened off the back of that. Um, um, and that's cool. And everything is absolutely fine. Um, there are a couple of things that sort of put question marks in my head about you know what is weird. Uh, about this and um sort of the the questions i'm left with the two things are one uh Oda block got banned for something that happened two years ago yeah. now they mentioned that it was a regular review now i'll guarantee that Oda block has had his account checked probably 20 times in that time oh yeah, oh, yeah. Um, there is a almost a, a a personal desire to ban big names from the game it's almost like it's like oh it's a badge of honor if I found someone some big name that's done something wrong and I've got a reason to ban them, um, and that's that's been that's been a, that's been that's just part of human nature you know, um, and uh, so I would so something has changed from them have, having seen this before, uh, this rule breaking before to now in order to make them ban him, uh, and why I think that decision was wrong and they've tried to cut back on that decision is because they then turned that permanent ban into a temporary ban. And you tell me any time you've heard Jagex do now, that. Now, once. Now, once. Yeah. And that's that's the weird thing. And they've not just done it for Odeblock, they've done it for everybody at that moment. So there's potentially hundreds of people who should have been permanently banned for doing bad things who now aren't. Um, and they've probably gone through, checked them again, saw them do the same thing, and then banned them again. I don't know. Um, but, but they're the two weird things that sit in there for me, the, these two decisions that are in there. Um, are you ever going to hear about what happens about this? You're not. No. No, no chance you're ever going to hear an outcome no. of this. Um, no. And I'll tell you the reason why. is uh, all boils down to Jed. Now, Jed uh, obviously was fired for doing bad things, and Jaggers were quite open about it. We were quite open about it at the time, uh, what he did. Um, now, Jed took Jaggers to court uh, last year. I think it must have been last year for um, unfair dismissal. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't win. There's a lot of debate over what actually happened. But if you read through the uh, court papers, then 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 you can actually see exactly what happened. Um, fortunately, I I studied law, so I've, I'm quite good at um, going through these and understanding what went on. Uh, he did get like a payout then, though, didn't he? Was it just compensation? Yeah. No. So what happened? The, the, the way that it works, they look at two things. They look at was the right process followed in order to fire somebody, um, and 
had the right process have been followed, assuming it wasn't, would they have fired him anyway? Yeah. So they're the two things they looked at. The first thing was like, right, they didn't follow the right process. Um, it felt like that the original decisions assumed his guilt and the original um, uh, start of the investigation assumed his guilt, which meant he didn't have a fair process to go through. But when they looked at actually the evidence of what had happened, um, uh, they saw, you know, even if they had have followed that part of the process correctly, they would still have fired him and it would have been a correct a correct decision, which is why he got a very minimal payout. I think it was a £1,000 rather than pounds, potentially yeah. the 10, 12, 15 grand he could have got yeah. off the back of this. And it was the minimum they could get away with paying and uh, or, or enforcing. And that's that's basically what happened. In fact, his I think, I think the um, his award got halved as well <laughs> uh, by the court because they were that much. They didn't want to give him anything if they could get away with it. It's just the law says they have to do that, that situation. Um, so he didn't win um, because <laughs> the most hilarious thing about the entire thing, if you read through uh, what he submitted, uh, one of the things he wanted um, if he won was his job back. And imagine working <laughs> in the team. And so he's like, the court said we've got to employ Jed again. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was reaching for the clouds, wasn't he? Oh, my God. I want to, like, <laughs> RuneScape stock just plummets a second. They hired Jim Bro, Bay. That guy was a but, menace. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, oh, the, the, the really interesting he's, thing, if I'm a lawyer sitting here too looking much, at man. this, yeah. if yeah, I'm a lawyer sitting here looking at this, and I think if he'd have won and they'd have said that um, uh, he shouldn't have been fired, then he could he could sue for a hell of a lot more because Jagex went out and made it made everybody aware that he had been fired, who he was. Um, and uh, he couldn't get another job because of uh, what what affected the information that came out of Jagex. Um, whether it was them that created the news, whether it was them who posted the articles, I don't think it particularly matter. But Jed would have been able to have said, right, because of what happened, this is what's now online about me. This is just defamation. So I can now sue you for defamation. That's um, hard. I, I, wouldn't, yeah. I won't be able to get another job for another 10 years because of all this stuff that's on the internet. So that's 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 why you're not going to hear anything. They're not going to take that chance yeah. again. They're just going to keep it quiet. If he has been fired, he would have been fired. You will not hear a thing. So um, I think you, people would have spotted him on LinkedIn more than anything. To be fair, if he had been, but... yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that his and I don't condone this, obviously, but everything under his his name got leaked, like his email, his his Netflix, his yeah, email, those his LinkedIn. Uh, so those older viewers are ruthless, man. Well, yeah. if what they say is true, which I don't. No, right? If they were falsely banned, because I remember streaming and I'd be like, Stella, scam me, whatever. I'd be reading this shit all the time. I'm like, who's Stella? Get out of here before this happened. I was like, I don't, what am I going to do? They don't even like me. I'm not going to help you out. I'm sorry, bro. Just <laughs> don't true. DM, right? Like, don't I really was, like I was, <laughs> Yeah, because it's like, I was a little annoyed. It's like, why are you coming to me? with It's whatever. So uh, that kind of makes it seem a little realer to me because I was living that firsthand, seeing these people reply after yeah. that. So uh, I... I don't know why I lost my train of thought here. So let me tell you a story, which might, which, yeah. this is this is going to be controversial and people aren't going to like this. Oh, okay. So you want to highlight this in your, uh, <laughs> so when, when this sort of stuff started happening, so again, back probably 2013, 2014, it first kicked off with people saying, right, I am going to um, duel for friends. That was what it started off, and I, I saw speaking, that when right? I first happened. Thought, this is this is amazing. You know, this is this as a community thing. This is you know, its purest form is absolutely beautiful. I will take money for you. I'll go and stake somebody. I will make more money from them. I'll give you back your share. In itself, as a concept, is an absolutely beautiful thing. Uh, it took from from the first concept of somebody saying, "I'm going to do this." Guess how long it took for someone to start scamming? Next week, Instantly. same day. Two <laughs> days. Two days. <laughs> Two days. Yeah. And it had been picked on, and every single person doing this was scamming. We went through and checked all their accounts, which is why I was very, when it first happened, I was very quick to say, right, anybody who does this, we're just going to ban them. And we went out yeah. publicly and said, like, if you're staking for friends, we're just going to ban you because you're cheating. It's as simple as that. You'd have people who are creating um, fake overlays on their account. You'd have people who are uh, uh, just dueling friends. And then you could see the trades going straight back to them again afterwards. And it would lose to them, and then they would be split, and that would be 50-50 each. And it would just happen every single oh time. Oh, my God. And you know what? I do not doubt that everybody who's in a DM clan, everybody who's um, doing a similar sort of thing now, no matter what it's been called over the last seven, eight, nine years of the yeah. same sort of thing, every single one is cheating. 
Mm, 100%. Um, it's just it's just printing money. When, when you and say that is, oh, you mean cheating as in like scamming the audience? Is yeah, that, just is scamming people. Yeah, they are stealing money from 100%. people. There's cheating. Yeah, there's that's really the only reason to do it. It's not out of charity yeah. because you know they they know they're not gonna have that particular stream forever it's just a quick you know running grab scheme i mean to, to me i feel like there's a this is a fucking unpopular opinion but i feel like it's the most simple one is like why even allow these dmccs to like middleman in the first place exactly, like yeah. why don't they just remove that and just they... make but that that's the whole thing like the whole Isn't reason it... this is a drama is because these ccs allow ranks to hold the money it's basically mm -hmm. like a different variation of flowering from yeah. the oc and they just they've hold the money and they pay out the winner there's a one reason right they've only appeared these clans because the jewel ring is not there yeah 100 percent. Right. and this is like a safe way of doing so basically this is how it works right you have a 1v1 against somebody you risk a bill they risk a bill but guess what you don't want to step in the wildy with that bill because somebody like west ham or fucking reese is gonna rush you and they're gonna kill you for your one bill so what you do is you trade it to fucking Odablock, and he holds mm. your one bill. And the other guy gives his one bill to Odablock too. And then whoever wins gets the payout. That's yeah. the entire CC's purpose. So mm. I don't fully understand why that's even allowed. Like, I mean, there's going to be lots of people that are like fucking angry at me for saying it, but like, I think they should just make them go in the fucking wildy. It's like, if you want to risk a bill versus someone else, you know, as they said when they removed the Dune Arena, it's like, they you got to ever... take that risk on your own back. It's up to you if you now, want to do it. I think the real question is they, you know, Jagex always have said like commission staking is bannable. They've made that, you know, it, like they've stated yeah. that so, many so, times. So now before. you can only give a donation, which a lot of the time you're pressured into. So doing, what is yeah? Is so funny. what is the statement? Have they made a statement regarding Bro, we, the? Mate, you're not allowed to like buy infernal capes, but let's be honest, mate. Like every fucking person has, so it's like yeah, they're uh, not yeah. enforcing their no, rules. But they, but they do, they do enforce it on like a like a like a like a half a year basis. They will all be like, okay, we moved a bunch of capes. Have a good day. You know, they do that. They, but like I'm mm. saying, like have they officially like made a statement where like, hey, you know, uh, these, you know. Uh, these uh, what do you call it? the death death match clans? Like, uh, not allowed. Like, well, have well, they so ever straight up said that? Th th this is kind of like where the whole Trident thing came in because yeah, I think why, I think that I he like was the guy important. that was basically like moderating it and making sure that everything was above board. Everything was within Jagex's rule set. But then obviously, why, it, why, why did he have so much influence to make that decision? Uh. If that is what I, so is going on, I think I it's know. a Apparently lack too. of. Wouldn't it just come down to like a lack of personnel that are doing it? Like I don't know I why he's so. been the only think, person. I think he yeah. has that power. I think he has to report up to his boss, who reports up to their boss. And this probably highlighted a whole bunch of extra reporting they need to have. So I'll tell you what, they probably got a whole, a whole bunch of extra reports each week off the back of this, which they probably. Yeah. So my my question is, why don't the ant like the you know like the people that are responsible for making these rules? Why don't they just straight up say, "Hey, that's bannable. You do this, we ban you. Done." You know, I don't yeah. know why they don't do that. Like, what's so, up? <laughs> what's so to give a little background? When I was doing my my videos, I was doing some research and talking to people, uh, also ex cheating analysts and stuff like that, and they said that the reason why they have to go so deep is if they don't get into that kind of realm of, of shadowy business, then they don't really know what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. Like they'll have to like reach out to the people who are doing the court bug glitch and go, Hey, you know, what are you, what are you doing? Let me build you an account so you can run this glitch. So I, I can know, or can you rat other people out? Like kind of like how the mafia and the FBI, right. Where they team up against the rest of the competition, <laughs> right? It's literally dead. Dude, it's like a Netflix strap on show. the tinfoil hats, boys. <laughs> no, no, that's what they, that's what he said when I was, um, I can't give away my source, but that's what he said. So, and it's yeah. funny because mm. Stella's story, which I'm not saying is completely true, also goes into that kind of uh, aspect where mm. her and Trident, and that's just what she depicted, uh, <clears throat> would, would try to find out who was running these scams or who's running these discords. And she made it almost sound like she was the victim in her story, where she's like, it was my time to open up a death matching CC. I'll be the hero. Like bullshit. First off, you're an addicted gambler. Yeah, she doing right? that forever, right? Like this person. Oh yeah. I mean, one of the weird things, like we're going to talk about weird things about that I story. Guess... Why is she 80 bill in debt? Isn't that weird? 80 where did the 80 bill, bill go? Where did what that's sketchy, right? Or maybe her uh, her Bitcoin wallet that has the exact amount of like one billion gold 
converted into to real money, like those transactions, like that's weird, right? And you can go find that information, right? So there's a lot of weird things in this case, but just being 80 bill in debt in general makes me not want to trust any person 80 bill in debt. You know, like so, 80, that's that's like 10 of my cars. You to, know, it's to, crazy. It's a relate, crazy amount. To relate what you just said to Jagex's investigation though, like, hey, maybe Matt can talk us through this because I don't imagine that their investigation is going to go that deep. They're only going to check like Trident's like logs and stuff, right? Like from your experience, Matt, when they do an investigation on somebody, so like with Jed, for example, um, what exactly are they able to look at? What are they looking for? And like, how deep can they go? Can they request access into like his Discord DMs, or like, is it just strictly in-house stuff? Um, if it is a Jagex uh, branded account, they can request information. That'd be part of the contract, I'd imagine that that he has to give over that information. If uh, so, so, so you're talking like password. so, like Twitter, Discord, mm. Twitter, and Discord official yeah. Jagex accounts. Yeah. So if you've got, I mean, uh, at Jagex Trident, they will be able to access his DMs in there. Okay. And they will have uh, emails as passwords for that, so they would have ultimate control over that account because it is a company account. Yeah. He's just um, accessing it. Um, his personal account, they won't. They won't be able to access that. Um, they've got no right to do that and um, could be doing things off the back of that. But, you know, I, d I don't think that's, that's, that's it. They could see anything that happens in the office, anything through the computer system. So um, they could see everything they needed to. Um, but this yeah. whole situation mm -hmm. occurs for one decision which i was very against um this being made but it wasn't wasn't again i wasn't there to stop it so and that was the removal of the jewel arena um this is the only reason this exists right now it's because the jewel arena is not there and when i just before i left i asked the anti-cheat team to run an investigation into it and i left before the, uh, the investigation was complete and there were three things that worried me if we were to get rid of the jewel arena how would it impact the anti-cheats team's ability to uh, and the bad people? Um, because they're not all going to be in the same place. Because my belief was that, look, if I'm making however many thousands of pounds a week, tens of thousands of pounds a week, uh, and Jagex take away the jewel arena, am I going to say, oh, well played, Jagex, I'm now going to go get a job? Of course you're fucking not. You're going to go and say, right, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do it differently. And you're going to go to the wilderness and start doing it in the wilderness. And this is exactly what's happened. Um, so that's the that's the that's the outcome from that. The the only in, the biggest impact of the removal of the wilderness, sorry, the removal of the jewel arena, is the impact on the people who are addicted to gambling. So these are the people who go out and sell their real world things in order to buy gold coins so they can go and gamble in RuneScape. Uh, and this is the the impact they have is they went from a situation which was uh, managed which was safe um, and which they understood to a situation where it's just ruled by the black market. And the only impact you're going to have is the people who are addicted and they're going to suffer for it. Um, but Jack I, I X aren't liable now from... then. Like, as, you know, aside from running into messes like this, which pretty much blew up because Odoblock's a massive content creator, mm. like, but Jack X basically have no liability at this point. But there's going to be a big backlash because... To be honest with you, if you're if what you're saying is true, and I believe you, like I don't think for a second that uh, Mod Trident's gonna get dismissed from the company. Why would he? Like unless he's like really stupid and incompetent, yeah. why would you leave any of that information on your personal Jagex's accounts when yeah. you can just? I don't think. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I don't think he's done anything wrong. I think he's been vilified. I don't think he's done anything yeah. wrong. He's done mm -hmm. Things by the book. And he's been a bit silly. I think having a. Um, uh, a visible relationship with Stella. That that's just not great optics, and I I don't think he understands that, and that's that's probably what's been explained to him. But yeah, I have you. I haven't seen him post publicly since. I think that's probably quite deliberate. Um, but um, to me, the the removal of the jewel arena feels like a decision that wasn't made in the best interest of the people that use the jewel arena. And that that has just sold people down the river. What's that um, famous quote? The the road to hell is paved with good decisions or um, good intentions, something like that. Like good intentions. I, I personally think though that like you know because it is a controversial take, right? Like with the whole dual arena stuff. I I think I think that if dual arena never exists in the first place, the whole idea of being able to put in whatever amount you want to you know as a as a you know basically uh if you lose you lose that like if that 
idea mm. never came into the game, I think it wouldn't be a problem in, in, in this game. It wouldn't really be an issue in this game yeah. in general. Agreed. I feel like yeah. originally, because of such a thing being there and being there for so long, it fostered this culture where essentially there is, you know, the, like it, RuneScape does have like that mindset, that gambling mindset. I, I, I think probably, I guess, because of the fact that, you know, it was there so long, we didn't remove it. We didn't, you know, it was there. I feel like they probably should have just limited how much you can stake in the dual arena rather than just fully remove it. Like, let's just say you can only stake up to five mil or something. And like, they, they did, to be or honest. something. They did it I don't know what the answer is. I mean, I, I mean, they I could don't... have done that. I feel like that would have been better. Yeah. I think they started doing that, didn't they? They started they, they doing just... that for the last few months yeah. on the way really they up did. to it. Yeah, they um, should have just done, they should have kept it that way. It would have been way better, you know? The thing is, we're trying to solve a problem that's not, it's just, it's riding on the foundation of RWT, right? Yeah. So you can't mm. solve that. You got to solve that before you yeah. can solve this. Well, you, There's you, no solving. So I think, well, you think can solve real world really... trade because trading is this, so. Yeah. So I, th I think we can solve it. Um, oh. And this ties into the next topic we wanted to talk about, which was botting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, I think all this ties in together. And and I've I've. I've had conversations with people, um, and I, th I think real world trading can be solved. Um, oh, so you're saying you can solve that that bottom foundation, yeah. then, not the the dual exactly, yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so I mean, let's, let's just start off with botting, and we'll get to real world trading in a bit. So, yeah. botting. Um, so, I'm going to ask you guys a question, actually, off the back of this. If I had a button which would ban bots and remove every bot from the game. What would happen if I pressed it permanently? No bots ever again in game. What's going to happen? Economy's going to heal. The player base might shrink. Well, a lot of the bit. resources would yeah. go up. Resources a lot of the resources would go up. I think the prices it would be... of resources would go up. Fuck, I don't even know. I'll be honest. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even I say resources would disappear because most most of the resources just come from bossing nowadays, and that's what people do. You know. You'd be surprised, so. man. I mean, I, I could finally find a world to do some RDO. That would be one thing. Right yeah. The thing is, you've got to realize is there would be a lot less resources, but then the bots also use those resources. So it's like, sure, there's like a lot, there's a smaller surplus, but there's also a smaller surplus of people that would use them. And also, how many, what percentage of bots are in the game right now? Like, didn't they used we to say no, a healthy amount know. was like 20% or no, something? I don't, I don't think that's the issue. I think that the issue is how much... Not resources are generated by the bots mm -hmm. not how many yeah they, they definitely remember, generate Tom, these, a lot of it these players don't sleep they're just they're it's just they get they're on constantly they're just farming running, and constantly, then dumping yeah. those supplies into a into a economy that's backed by people who actually sleep you know what i mean there's, there's well, not like, really a balance so there. i mean i just like because like you know there'd be some equilibrium getting reached at some point right because mm -hmm. like obviously resource prices would change a lot you know item prices would change a lot but i mean long term there would be some sort of equilibrium right where everything kind of like settles down to a certain number we, i don't know what number there would be because it's you know there's so okay, many so, variables to it but so yeah. here's what i think is going to happen if we were to ban all bots now one i think we'll all agree community the economy would go to shit for a long time um there would be some destabilization of course you know Say some, yeah. I think it would be massive destabilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, you're instantly removing, you know, everything. So I've, I've got, blocks. I've got scenes of the end of uh, Fight Club when they blow up the big banking buildings. That yeah. sort of uh, destruction yeah. to the economy. Um, but the other thing which would happen is you are going to be forced to do things that you don't want to do. So if you think about how people play games now, people play games now very differently to how they played games five years ago or ten years ago. Um, it was quite comfortable. I will go and pick flax for five hours because I know I'm going to get some stuff off of it. Um, if there's no flax available, um, you can't buy it. Therefore, you've then got to do this. But I don't want to do that. I want to go and kill bosses. I want to go and fight things. I want to go and do the stuff that I want to do. I don't want to have to go and do boring stuff like picking flax or what, what making food, which is the best food, which isn't the most optimal way of doing stuff. People are going to be forced to do content they don't want to do. And that's that's the big thing for me. Economy goes to shit. People are doing stuff they don't really want to do. They want to get to the good content. Um, and that, to me, is what would happen if we get rid of bots. Mm. And that is not a good thing. Because if you are forced, if you if you're said, right, I'm going to go to uh, play old school RuneScape today. Oh, what I really want to do is go and do a raid, but I can't do raids because I don't have enough, 
don't know, sharks or rock tails or whatever to do this. So before I could do raids, I have to go and fish them because I can't buy them. Um, yeah, you're probably going to go start playing other games because I don't have the supplies to do it. I have to get them myself. It basically turned people into an Iron Man. Um, and people don't want to play that way. Iron Men are very fun. Uh, people really do enjoy them, but they probably only equate to, what, 15 to 20% of the player base. It's not It's not the massive majority of it. So 80% of the player base are doing content they don't want to do. I can't think of a worse way to, or, a, or a quicker way to get people to stop playing your game than by forcing them to do something you can't do. Well, so, so to me, the outcome of this is bots are essential for you guys to play the game you want to play. I think um, it depends on the variety of bots. Because there are bots which I would agree are almost like the underbelly of society and they kind of keep the economy flowing. They're the rats. So like the rev bots, for example. But then there mm. are bots that are, like, I, I don't know if you know this, man. There are bots that are killing, like, the corrupted gauntlet that have, like, plummeted the price of, like, the Bofa and stuff like that. Mm. So you're talking about a piece of content which, firstly, is pretty endgame. And it's like there was like a massive item you could get from it. And now a lot of players are decentivized into doing that content. So it's like those kind of bots should disappear. It's so, like, if, I think as well, there's like a thing where like if you see a bot that has tens of thousands of kills or tens of millions of XP and they've not been banned, like it's a bad fucking look for Jagex. Like if you look at okay, some of the corrupted, right. the corrupted gauntlet bots, it's like some of them have tens of thousands of KC. And it's like, they're clearly botting because unless they're doing gauntlet for like 16 hours a day, there's no way they, they should have that. And that's all they so, do. So, so let me ask you um, two questions about this. One is, how does that impact you, these bots? Well, it makes me less, like, wanting to engage with the content less because I'm not going to get as much money. And that drives me okay. to do content. So it's, it's, it's hitting the, the value of the things that you want to do. Yeah. Um, so why are they doing it? Probably because they're selling it for real life money, I'd assume. Yeah, they, they want to make money. That's, that's what it boils down to. So it boils down to um, make there are money. lots of bots because, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are lots of bots because they want to make money. The secondary impact of them making lots of money is that the value of things you want to buy is going down, <laughs> or the value <laughs> the of things, things you can get, get is going down, yeah. so you make less money. Yeah. Um, so to me, the one solution to this is you make real world trading not against the rules so you allow people to do it okay so i mean that's that's why, you know, the bot because the the value of the gold would go but, down is that what you're saying oh indeed but that that again that will level itself out because you don't want to bot too much because you still want to earn money to do it so why would jagex ever do this so why is is real world trading against the rules because it is uh, kind of like stealing from Jagex is how they say it, right? You're stealing our gold and profit, profiting off it. I, I actually, I don't know. I've always, I don't really know. I mean, I don't know Jagex's you know <laughs> reason. I don't. Well, I don't know like what the Wait, game developer's reason, but I property? personally no, I would want to. I don't think they care about that, man. No, I, I mean, I so. person like if I sure. if I ran like an online game, right? I I just don't like the fact that. Like if if like the majority of the players are actually bots, then it just is a bad rap for the you know it's just a bad rap for the, for the game, right? I I would want to ban them just purely off of that, and probably number two just because if it's uncontrolled, then the you know the economy prices are just gonna keep tanking, right? And like no one's gonna want to do any content yeah. if they just keep botting, but he's right? not, and he's there's not, no he's control. He's not asking that. He's asking why is RWT like why is it a bad thing from Jagex? I, it used to be right because they had credit card information. Uh, sorry, credit credit uh, problems where like yeah, fraud and I, all that. You know, stuff, I've never yeah. fully understand understood how that worked exactly because right the way that it was explained to me was that there were people that were buying like gold and then they were getting scammed and then they were calling up their banks and being like, hey, I've bought this gold from this. But like, how would that have even related to Jagex as yeah. a company? Like, why were they getting in trouble for that? Can you explain that situation? Yeah, so so what, what, what would have happened was um, 
I go buy gold, I give my credit card number over to a company to buy gold, they use my credit card number to buy membership for Jagex, uh, for Jagex oh, accounts, okay. which means their uh, fraud uh, number goes too high. If the fraud number gets too high, credit cards are withdrawn, credit card supports are redrawn, uh, withdrawn from the game, and if a credit okay. card disappears, the game dies, basically, if you can't use a credit card in the game. All right. That's not the reason. That that, so, that makes sense. That that's that bit of information yeah. I needed. Uh, yeah. That's that's why that's why um, uh, uh, trading was uh, stopped basically. Uh, to because had they have not done that, the game would just not exist. Because if you couldn't, eighty percent of um, revenue was taken from credit cards at the time. You lose eighty percent of revenue, the company goes bust. Simple as that. Uh, but that's not the reason. I mean, again, this is my interpretation of the reason. It's not necessarily Jagex's reason. They might have others, um, but. You know, real-world trading was originally against the rules um, because you didn't want people to be able to buy their way to success. That's the uh, thing for it. That's yeah, not that's, a thing anymore. that's what I would think, too. Yeah. You know, number it's one. So, yeah, that, that's not a thing anymore. I mean, people do that anyway. Real-world trading exists. I want to go buy gold. I can use bonds. That's what it really is. Um, people can get gold in order to buy stuff. Um, uh, so that's that's not really a thing. Um, bots, as I said earlier, bots are an essential part of the game. I think other bots can be managed, um, and economy levels can be managed as well. So that doesn't particularly worry me. The reason why I believe that real world trading is against the rules is because of IP protection. So if I do not regularly protect my IP, I lose right to protect my IP. So if by IP, I mean intellectual property. So if I do not regularly protect my IP um, and somebody wants to start creating um, RuneScape 4 um, and I can't stop them because they're using all my IP, but I've never tried to protect my IP in the 15 years previously, I will probably fail of being able to protect that. So it's a massive thing. IP is very valuable to Jagex. If you think about the, the value of the company, um, the last sale price I heard uh, mentioned was you know in the billions. Um, your IP is worth billions of dollars. You know, it's 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 significant uh, amount of money. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, so, how do you make real world trading legal without while protecting your IP? Now, if I'm Jagex, I'm sitting there thinking, right, real world trading happens. I'm I'm fighting a losing battle to stop it from happening. Every time I ban somebody and I go close to somebody who looks like they're famous, I get so much shit out of it. Why would I even bother trying to do that? Um, I'm only doing it because um, I need to protect uh, my legal covenant off the back of this. How do I allow people to real-world trade while protecting my um, IP? And the way I would do that would be to allow people to uh, um, take all our gold coins, attach each gold coin to the blockchain, and allow people to actually buy things through the blockchain. Thank you. That way, Jagex can then just take 5% of every trade that ever happens. You think you think you know Jagex made what 100 million quid a year? Um, how much is real world traded? Probably several billion dollars a year. Take five percent of that, add it to your profit pool. Boom, Jagex makes Huge. shitload of money. Huge. You guys are allowed to do it. Um, nobody gets banned for it. That I mean, their, their customer support complaints will go down because nobody's going to get banned for it anymore. Um, and it's all completely monitored, all completely safe because you're doing it through a blockchain. So trades are happening at the same time. You don't have to worry about. Um, these things happening, uh, credit card fraud, you don't have to worry about uh, people cheating other people because it's all done through the markets that are on there. Um, that way, real world trading just becomes part of the game and part of it. And you can make money out of playing RuneScape legitimately. And that's that's such an exciting thing. Do you mm, know? Yeah, I, I, think, I completely think... agree, bro. Um, because I brought, I brought this idea up a while ago. And it's funny mm. to see how. Um, it's funny to see how I mean I'm just gonna really quickly go over the history of like Netflix and how they fell right and now we got or not Netflix but um, Blockbuster and now we have Netflix right and whoever made that jump back in the day remains here and now we have Web3 and we have games that have its own economy and you can make money from playing that game and it seems like the companies that are not gonna make the jump to Web3 are gonna be a thing of the past and when we oh, brought indeed. up Fortnite yeah, earlier that was one of the companies that was uh, definitely considering a Web3 potential, right? They are they are made to where they could easily just kind of go into Web3. And then you got uh, Grand Theft Auto 6, who has just stated that you're going to be able to take the money you make in GTA 6 and turn that into Bitcoin or you receive some sort of Bitcoin or crypto and you'll be able to farm that off that game. 
So I, it's so refreshing to hear you who used to work for Jagex say, yeah, this situation, this problem could easily be resolved and then you could boost your profits by going on the blockchain. Easily. <laughs> so, like easily. <laughs> okay, not easily, but I'm saying if it was I, able to do it, you'd boost your profits easily. Not doing yeah. the switch the blockchain. That would like that almost seems in my mind impossible for them to do, I, sadly. But yeah. And your profits would go up. I think I have a few like you know, I I want to be as like unbiased as possible, right? Uh, with kind of like you know what I'm hearing here. So I feel like there's two big parts to it, right? There's there's number one, this this uh actually uh, it's hard to explain, but like I think the technology part I want to talk about, right? It's that it's that like I guess technology has evolved just so much that we might just have to as a as a whole community, you know, adapt to the inevitable you know, changing technology to actually survive as a community. That's what it seems like, because nowadays we get more and more advanced bots. And how how hard is it to keep up with the arms race of finding better bot detection, you know, to keep up with these new, sophisticated, more in ever growing, intelligent bots, right? Um, Jagex will lose that arms race. Yeah, that, that, so that, I think AI. that's like the biggest one. You'd have yeah, to have yeah. AI fight AI. That's the yeah. only way. <laughs> No, but like, but like, I'm saying, even if they do have AI fight AI, it's like, how do you, will you be able to continuously keep up with that? I don't know if Jagex can. And then, the of AI, yeah. AI keep up. so, so then the other, you know, the second part is, is, and that, that's the, I guess the spirit part of this game is that, like, you know, I think the idea of, like, as a player playing this game, knowing that, like, you know, uh, the, the anti staff, uh, anti, I mean, anti bot team, like, are actively, the leading bots and fighting against bots there's like that feeling where like wow i grind this game and like these people you know they're out there to like kind of like protect preserve my 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 worth in this game by you know going against going up against people that cheat right there's like that culture right like where we still i feel like we still have it but like i don't i don't know if it's sustainable anymore it's because from you know for a long time i think that's kind of like the relationship right we don't we don't really i think for a player's point of view it's more like wow these guys are here to preserve my you know the values of what i've gained in this game right like my livelihood in this game because like a lot of people play this game as if it's like a second life to them right like where the things that they do here have a lot of value but i but i think obviously once we maybe inevitably move to this idea of having to just you know, uh, consolidate this whole real world trading and make it like just a normal day to day thing. I feel like, you know, we'll definitely have, have to lose that. I'm not sure how that's going to change the culture mm -hmm. of this game. Right. So I think that in a way, yeah, what you're saying is, you know, it kind of you know, sounds like to me, technology is probably going to, you know, eventually uh, completely wipe out that, that like culture because we, we just can't sustain it anymore. You know, like there's, I don't, I, think... I personally don't think we, we can maybe keep up with so the more advancing bots if you i know? can chip well, in real quick so are you saying that if they were to make this move that the people who are putting in reports for rwt etc etc would disappear and then the bot team would have more time to work on the bots is that the argument you're making for this they wouldn't need one no no i'm talking to matt i see yeah um i i think there's other ways of, of defeating bots i think there's there's Bots are always going to be there. You can't get rid of them. Um, how do you manage it? It's not a case of um, it's the impact of bots rather than the bots itself. So why bother attacking the bots? Um, if I look at the first way we looked at dealing with bots in old school RuneScape, I don't know if actually anybody knows this, but uh, if not, uh, if shit happens. Um, I'll have lawyers on the phone. Um, the uh, first thing we did was we created bot worlds. Um, in order to move people who we thought were bots into bot worlds, um, because we didn't want to, we, we weren't sure, we couldn't be sure we could ban the bots. Um, we didn't particularly want to ban bots anyway, because if we banned all the bots, then suddenly it could be that we just have no support left for the game. So if you think about um, uh, from a corporate point of view, we ha uh, old school RuneScape makes X amount of money. If it makes less money, you get less developers to work on the game, which means you can't turn the game into something better because you're only going to, the less money it makes, the less support you get. 
for making the game. So one of the risks was, okay, if we actually ban all the bots at the very beginning or people who we believe are bots, do we actually lose all our support for the game and therefore the game will just die through degradation? So we created bot worlds. Um, and that was to move pe- move bots away from people into a separate world so that we could, you know, um, uh, make the impact of them less. Mm. And that could be the way that you approach bots in the future. You make the impact of the bots less on the players so that you have access to all the stuff you want to kill because you move in bots somewhere else and you can say, you know, I'm a bot, therefore I want to go to bot world. Um, I- I'm not a bot, therefore I will be in a normal world. Um, and th- that allows normal players to access that content without having to compete with bots. Um, same with LMS, you can have a botted LMS world um, where all LMS bots will fight against each other to to get the stuff that they want to get. Whereas if you're not an LMS bot and you want to play LMS because you, uh, for whatever reason, you may want to play it when you're not a bot, um, you can go and uh, go and do it with that. So that might be a, a way of looking at it, but it's a completely different context shift of how people think about bots. And it's going from bots are bad to actually bots are essential because the game just is not going to exist without them. I, I guess I, I guess I misunderstood the part about you saying uh, making uh, you know selling gold into kind of like a blockchain so Jagus can get more money. I guess that doesn't get rid of botting. Right? It just <laughs> makes trade. It just makes selling gold legal. Where where yeah. Jagus can earn more money, just like they you know sell bonds for membership. But I'm not saying get rid of botting. Yeah, because botting is essential for the gum, for the game. Because it allows you to do the content you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, would you agree that you know, uh, consistent moderation of bots is is necessary? Because you know, we have we don't want to have these like bossing bots, you know, just uncontrolled, unregulated, and just con- constantly just getting all these no. unique items into the game and crashing the prices. You know, Why right? Not? Because they don't care about the unique items; they care about the money they're making. I know, but as a player, though, we would be complaining because then all these item cra- prices are crashing and then we can't play the game. It's like we don't so want to do the content. About, right. so, um, I kill that bot. I'm a bot that kills the boss, um, but there's a lot lower chance of getting a rare item, but I can still make the same amount of money through all the resources that come in. I mean, it, it, there's lots of different ways you can look at how you do this, but the good items you only get from um, not playing it as a bot. Oh, okay, so I guess no, but I'm saying like, what would what would be the technology? I guess you know, like, is that what you're saying? Is moving somehow detecting the bots and moving them to a different place kind of deal? I mean, I mean, you can move them to a different place. You could have it so that they they automatically flag themselves as a bot. Um, so I am going to run a bot on this account. Um, I know I'm allowed to do it. Um, therefore, I know that the restrictions I get, I'll make the same amount of money, but I'm not going to get the rare items. So rare items maintain their value. And this is just, a, just off the top of my head, you know, but these are, these, there are lots of different things you can do in order to solve the individual problems that a player has versus the bots, because the bots are there for one purpose, to make money. Uh, not necessarily to make money from the rare items that you want to get. So I think that you're assuming that Jagex can detect all the bots. Um, no, he's saying, yeah. he's saying theoretically this is what he yeah. can do. Yeah. But, I think, like, I think but, there's, there's, yeah. there's ways around it, you know, there's, there's, I mean, I don't know all the ins and outs, and I haven't sat down and thought about all the ins and outs about where it is, but the concept in itself is, if you allow people to make money from the game, um, make real world trade and legal, you get rid of so many problems by doing it, blockchain is a technology that allows you to do that. Again, there's going to be lots of edge cases where bots doing this, that, the other is going to impact players, but they can all be individually looked at, solved in different ways it could be how you i mean it could be the the rarest items that you get um, are not tradable and you have to go and get them yourself um and that that might be a, a way of looking at it i'm not saying it's the right way but that's a different perspective of looking at how that that sort of thing works that's how most other games you know do it. this conversation though is really insightful so uh but i guess you know i i kind of m- m- realize more and more that eventually we might just have to shift our culture you know, in how we perceive botting and real-world trading, because, yeah, it's tough. I mean, like, I, I think auto-flying yourself as a, a bot account and then being only able to farm resources might be, a like, a a way to, like, you know, stop the inevitable cr- crashing of these unique items in a way. I, I don't know. It sucks to say, like, like, in a way where I already feel like we lost the battle, you know, to, like... 
we lost really, it a long time. You know what I mean? Ago, to man. like really uh <laughs> control the bots, you know, and, and the mm. new technology. Because I mean, I'm not this isn't just a RuneScape theme, you know. This is like the theme of our world nowadays, you know. We have just crazy technologies that can literally copy other people's work. And there's like all it's just like I don't want to get it, too deep in that. But you get what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's just human it's, conscious bro. yeah it's fucking insane crazy? right now so it could, it's it could scary mimic a voice and then it could speak in a pattern to where you couldn't know if that was an ai so that's to the point where we're at and there's no way that the team at jagex is going to even be able to try to fight this bro and i just yeah. want to go over like because it excites me runescape on excites the blockchain you? right I'll yes it does I'm well like that, very much sure. and so, okay. so real quick can i, can I, I give some it. pushback because I, I we haven't heard much pushback so can i raise a few sure concerns? go ahead hit it hit up bro. so just just real quick i i think that it probably would solve some issues but i think that it would also make some brand new ones so i think firstly if this were to happen let's see theoretically they brought in the blockchain and it was like okay so you can just sell your 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 gold you can do it freely that's fine so that would lead to basically I would imagine a lot of people doing it like way yeah, more than what we're now like a huge mm. amount so the price of gold would effectively plummet right like because it would basically maybe be a, it, well no it would well it no because you don't know about the blockchain right because when you put something on the blockchain people can trade it right that's why these meme coins these shit coins with no utility think of the utility in gp are going crazy numbers it could honestly pump gp somehow if you could trade it and then maybe even trade items you could have a real life market value for runescape items and gp it could it might maintain it could definitely crash but i could say there's also a good good choice that it could pump for more people being able to hold that gold in their wallet safely right even if you don't play runescape you're like oh I'll just buy some gp why not it has utility more than most of these shit coins so there's a good chance that putting it in the wallet of more people could actually raise the oh price. you think that people would use it as an investment purpose you could take gp right and give it utility outside of runescape too right where you could pay stuff off with gp you could pay off maybe you could pay runescape membership with gp in the future oh, that's what the blockchain is so cool because you take every financial thing on the blockchain and it's all interchangeable. So you could you can make it a utility. It, I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying they could. Right? I, I think they that could be a lot more. it would, to be honest with you, if they wanted to make... So firstly, I don't think that doing the blockchain for RuneScape Gold fixes bot in whatsoever. I think it would probably lead to more it issues. Does, with it bot. doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Then you could mean, also so I thought this was a gateway blockchain. into how it would fix it. But I, on the I, blockchain, yeah. you could track transactions. So if you see somebody selling gold and in, in this big old thing, you're tracking their wallet, right? It's a lot easier to track than RuneScape because you only get the RuneScape side. You don't get the the financial side. You track everything on the blockchain. So yeah, there well, could you be know, a Matt, good Matt was saying, you know, Matt was saying it's not about you know necessarily destroying or removing all the bots, you know, because he says it's an important aspect of the game. So. It's just more about making railroad trading less problematic for Jagex, but not necessarily that the botting gets yeah. easier Bossing or worse. You know? Botting is not a problem. Right. People only see botting as the problem because of some emotional impact on it. There is, I mean, I think uh, Rakes, he said that there's a uh, legitimate impact on prices of things. Um, but prices are generally led by opinion rather than actually by fact. Um, if everything's done through the blockchain, you can look at fact rather than just have opinions on why things are going up and down in price. Um, and and to me, what I'm saying is botting is not the problem. Botting can be managed. Botting, um, you know, if, if there's not enough worlds to do something, we'll just allow everybody to have their own private world, uh, their own private space where they can go and do the boss that's normally always botted. Um, but it's not about the bot. The bot is not the problem, it's the impact of the bot. How do you manage that? Mm. The biggest impact is real world trading. Make that legal, that's not an impact. Um, the other thing is prices of stuff that could be managed in, in multiple other ways. And I'm, I'm sure they could all be all sorted out in different ways around the back yeah. of that. So, otherwise, you know, what problem does the bot create? I, I agree, I agree. I was going to lead into my thought was going to go to if it were to crash the price of gold, which I do believe it would. Uh, just because there'd be such an influx in gold that would be sold, then mm. it would probably have an inflationary kind of effect on items, where it's like gold is now worthless, but your Tebow is still a Tebow, 
Tebow's going to skyrocket, mm. right? Which that which would then lead to problems such as bots no longer caring about doing resource gathering. I think Rexy's activities. on point on that one. And they would then mm, go on good. to stuff like Cox, for example, and try to farm Tebow's, and it would like it would basically fuck me even harder than what it is right now because they're able to just go go get rune ore, black D hides from the revs. And that doesn't really bother me because, like, hey, if I want to get my craft enough for smithing, I can fucking get it cheap. I but think that I would think, be a problem. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think lately, like, because, you know, modding's been around forever, right? And I've never really felt too concerned about them just because it's some, somehow, you know, you just kind of feel like they're just the cockroaches of, of RuneScape, you know, they're just there. But, like, lately, though, it feels like. It's, it's a completely different landscape of botting, you know, right? It's like uh, for a long time leading up to this, it was like maybe a year ago, two years ago, right? You, you've always heard rumors or the occasional like proof that you see like an actual PVM bot, like not just, you know, some low level mo bot, like, like a real bot, like killing nightmare or something. And you're just mm -hmm. like, wow, okay, that's kind of crazy. And then like, but I feel like now this, this year, especially it's like irre irrefutable. They are yeah, there. Yeah. And they are they they come in good numbers, you know. Yeah. Like, like yesterday, like two days ago, randomly, some dude in my CC he got a Zenite shard. I, I I remember distinctly, Zenite shards were just over ten mil for the longest time, and all of a sudden it's like seven mil seven in this economy yeah. with inflation. Holy I'm like, holy, shit. Shit. yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Ha wait, there's no way. Like, mm. Dead of Treasure Two is coming out. People should be stocking this shit up, and like prices should be going up. But why is it only seven mil? But like, I'm just hearing all these people now. They're like, yeah, man, there's like four or five bots in uh, Demonic Worlds. There's a, uh, you know, there's a bunch of bots at Nightmare. There's a bunch of bots at Gauntlet. I'm like, all right, damn. Like, I can't be like, don't worry, guys. I, I used to be like that, but I, I can't. I can't say that because so, I'm like, this look, is not right. Something's up. Something's changed. The so, worst part about so, that is because we're doing yeah. that content. Like, we're at that content because either you need a piece of the armor because it's like end game or because you're trying to get it to sell it. And there's something about that that's just so, like, you're right. It's an emotional response. It pisses me off. It is. Because it's like, why is this little fucker farming Inquisitor? Why is Inquisitor pieces like 70 mil a piece when they're so fucking hard to get? Oh, it's because they're bots in every single world. When they're, when they're farming revs, I don't really give a shit. Because it's not impacting those big prices. It's on those, more just inflationary gold, you know. But yeah. Yeah. Um. So like, so like, you know, the whole like, you know, you can make an account idea where, you know, you can flag yourself on purpose as a bot, and like, even if Jags allows you to do that, you know, so then you can only farm resources. I feel like, like Rixie said, at, so, at some point, the gold value, the resource values are going to be so low because obviously everyone's going to take advantage of it. Why do? Why work? You know, when you can do that, right? But at some point, right, the value of those things will go down. And and there definitely will be technology where people can not need to flag themselves as bots and just arm like as a real account, like we have now, where we just get back to the same problem, you know, where they just farm the uniques. And I think that's the thing that is probably the most pressing right now with the botting. I I, I think the whole real world trading legal thing is cool. But it doesn't, it's, you know, I, I'm not, con I'm not too concerned about that part, I guess. It's more so this new, like, new age of technologically uh, much more advanced bots where they can essentially play like a real player. You know, yeah. they're like so much closer to being a real player. The real player. Okay. Like, <laughs> I, I know, you know? So I know how so, the system works. Um, I can't see how chat gpt can bypass that how many how many are you aware of any particular bot that's been created on chat gpt no i don't look that wish. stuff up i just no, know I that wish. there are a lot of pvm bots right now <laughs> you okay. know and like the, the so, prices so are hear, showing you know i hear i hear i've heard a lot about chat so. gpt bots and i'm like okay tell me one tell me something about it give me give me give me some information other than I've just heard a a uh, latest trend uh, on uh, on the internet and attached it to a problem that I'm facing. Um, I I can't see how uh, ha, so, how, how it would make things any better unless you know how the bot system works. You can't bypass it. To to, to play devil's advocate, just of course, a Trident bit. might have told everybody. 
Maybe. Just put that out there. <laughs> but it, my friend was messing around with chat GPT a little bit. He said, yeah, I had it write scripts for me for bots, and he doesn't even know how to run bots. I'm like, what are you doing? You get banned. He's like, I, I don't even play RuneScape. He's just doing it for fun. And it will just make stuff up for you on the fly about what you want. You just feed and input it information. And the craziest part about GB, chat GPT is the apps inside of it talk to each other, right? So they're like, you can have an app of an app, and it does, and it, it filters this information for you. So say if you wanted so, it to be like, uh, do this thing for me and then click in a way to where it's different every time you could probably manage that and then maybe if you uh, wanted it I'll to tell you i'll tell you where all this came from right so i mean i use chat gpt all the time i've used it in many many things in many different ways uh to do this I'm, I'm a great fan of what it can do for you um now the biggest problem with uh it's, this this boils back to rune light now if you look at yes. the biggest problem with bots or the big the most difficult way that if you're going to make a bot the most difficult thing to make is the client itself it's not the script the script is a pretty straightforward thing people are just chat gpt allows you to make that script quicker it's no more effective than a script that you know a, a proper script person can write um it just allows anybody to access that bit of information so it doesn't actually make bots better um but the difficult thing is creating that client in order to access the game, in order to actually create a script which allows you to automate and create the bot. And one of the biggest problems with chat with uh, RuneLight was when we were first looking at it, it was like, well, this effectively lowers the barrier of entry for anybody to make a bot, which is why we went after them hard to start with, to say, hey, um, we're going to just sue your ass to high heaven. If you don't shut it down, our lawyers are going to come and set fire to your house and... Uh, call your kiddies names at school that sort of thing um so we were quite nasty about that um and it didn't work rightfully obviously. so you know rightfully so yeah um it didn't didn't work at all um obviously uh adam who i get on well with really really well now um he was just like i'm just going to tell everybody then everybody forked a copy of the client and i was like ah shit that didn't work um so uh so um but but at the end of the day rune light is one of the biggest reasons why there are so many bots what was he thinking, though? You know, like making it open source like that. Honestly. I remember Rice I, saying that it I was did talk to Adam. I've known, It was. Yeah, yeah I've, known, I've known Adam for years. Um, I didn't know I knew him, but I, I had known him for a long time because um, he was in the uh, Max Player forums when I was looking after the Max Player forums. So I, I knew it was who told me what his uh, RuneScape cam was. I'm like, oh, fuck, I've known you for ages. Um, but anyway, so I was talking to him about this, and he said the biggest reason that the reason he wanted to make Rune Light was because he wanted a free version of uh, RS Buddy. Yeah, he didn't agree with RS Buddy charging money for stuff, and I was yeah, like, was "Fair play, I completely agree with you on that." And okay. he said, "The only way I could get people convince people to use it is to make it open source, because otherwise people just <sighs> wouldn't trust it." And that's the only reason. And does this he is regret the... it? Um, yeah, is as soon as we source? asked him, I mean. What looking back, what we should have done that time is that look, mate, here is the reality of the problem. Um, we really need we needed to have trusted the guy more right at the beginning and say, look, here's the reality. We need you to close source it, close source everything, um, uh, because we need to get get rid of the open source side of it because it's, it's creating problems. Um, if we'd have done that, I think we would not have the bot problem we've got now. But we went in hard with lawyers and shit, and it was the wrong decision. Um, and yeah, uh, I, he I regret did. That enormously. I do regret that enormously. He did op open Pandora's box, man. Yeah, it seems like yeah. a botter's wet dream. Chat GBT plus open source, you could probably do whatever the hell you want with, with yeah, those Indeed, tools. indeed. And this is this is why we've got the Bob problem there. Or what I believe. I mean, Jaggets will have a different I opinion. I agree. I, I agree. I, and to play devil's advocate again, talking about like the original way you say that it. bots should be a part of the game, I, I feel like there's never going to be a way, I agree with you in a, in a way that you're never going to be able to ban all the bots. <laughs> but right now, it is Dude. bad. And you can literally go to Grand Exchange Price and just see these items tanking. Right? They are, it's They're such... literally down like 40% pre-hype update. <laughs> Yeah, let look, me look let me items. be controversial here and yeah. say, as not a high level player, um, I have a fair bit of money because people keep giving me gold because you know <laughs> content creators we just leverage that until the cows come home. You've reached legendary um, status. You're just rich it, yeah. for free. People just give me gold. Um, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I I'm happy with the price of things going down. I have no problem. Oh with yeah, that yeah. Work. I think it will benefit some players for sure. 
And again, you people at the top level, maybe 0.005% yeah. of the community, why should we care so much about you other than another 99.995% of the community who are benefiting from it? Well, so, yeah, so... like I, I just want to say this real quickly. Um, just devil's advocate again, right? When I'm trying to go farm RDO and I can't find a world, and then this bot's program to go down because it's not one of the botted worlds and steal my kill tick perfect with Entangle, that makes me not want to play. And then on top of the items, like let's say the Vedion Skull, on release, biggest yeah, indeed, update but you're, the you're only 0.005% of the community, so why would I care whether you played or not? But well, that's <laughs> PvP, right, which we're going to get into next. That's also yeah. a big topic. Mm -hmm. But Vedion yeah. Skull, bro, 300k biggest attachment to the Theramid Scepter, which is now one of the best weapons for, for the wilderness in, in terms of Mage PVM. That is definitely a so, product, bro, of botting. Not to mention the other items that are all dropped onto onto that, including the rev weapons in general, which have all decreased in value crazily after the biggest updates ever. And it's not like uh, we want to maintain 100 mil, but hell, it's under a mil for up upgrades that are insane. Right? But what, it's, Ma it's, what it's, Matt's saying is that it's a good thing for 99% of up the players that can now afford that stuff no it's good for bots because then they can buy these weapons to keep farming this shit it's not good for their players because now the players want to do that content and they don't make as much yeah so well, i mean i could i can make the that's... content freely available i mean it's not it i mean I'll, I'll just get everybody their own instance to do a piece of content simple as that solve that yeah. problem you're not being able to do it I but think it's still the, a problem now, sadly. Yeah, I yeah, wish they so, would instance it. Honestly, it would be very nice, right? But then yeah. how would you kill those people? Would you go into an instance? Because it's in the wild. It's supposed to be dangerous. I don't want to talk about the other stuff outside the wild. So, I don't. This go ties in there, really but... nicely to the PvP conversation that we probably yeah. should get on to. Otherwise, this, this, this podcast yeah, would yeah, go on for about mm -hmm. eight hours. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do have something I want to say regarding the, the pricing situation because... Like items going down is one thing, but like how fast is going down will will you know will definitely make people panic. And I think panic is one of those things. If it's big enough, it's like you know people will remember forever, and it's gonna leave a bad mark. I think this is one of those times where the items are going down so bad that you will be hearing really like you know big news on this like for the weeks to come i think because it's it's already brewing the storm is already brewing with this but um but yeah no i don't i mean like yeah of course the lower level players you know they they probably don't mind it but also the problem is is that when you when you like speed run when everybody kind of just speed runs their way to the high level there is definitely a lot of cultural shift where you know like back in the day right when like things just got too easy the game became a joke and that's kind of like what, we, you know, it might sound a little biased, but th that there's a lot of truth to that. You know, it, it was like that before when things got too easy. And when prices of all these valuable items, if they ever get to a point where it's critically low like that, even for the, you know, some of the best content, then we are going to get to that problem again where, you know, people ask themselves, why even do this content if all this shit is like kind of worthless? You know, barely worth yeah, the money. Right? Give, give me, give me an item. Oh. Give me an item that's that's dropping like that. Skull of video. Yeah, yeah, just a bunch of things. You know, like the Zenite shards. Like I was saying, it, it used to be Fingers. literally I'd, like I'd a month ago. Zenite shards like probably 12 a, good, mil. a good example. Yeah. And scepter. Yeah, they were like twelve mil, like last month or something, right? Now they're like seven mil. They literally lost half the value in in like a month. Yeah, it's never wrong devaluing, but it's when you go to the wild and you can see every bot just farming to its heart's content just happily and then stealing the kills from other players and then of course revs i mean i know right so you don't mind revs i mind it that shit's botted the hell bro and they'll just come and they'll steal your rev right from under you and they're all around the combat where you can't even attack them to where they're even contributing to the wild yeah, yeah it gets to a point there. yeah I'm, it gets to a point where it's just too rampant you know I, where saying, like you can't do the content or the items are just yeah so much lower than it used to be that it's like you know it if everyone can reach that point, then there's really no point in high level content in a way, you know, because it's like everyone just reaches end game that much faster and then they just get bored eventually, right? The, the reason they it doesn't on. bother me is because they mostly just farm resources that are at a high out price anyways. So they're basically just farming GP and emblems. That That's why mm. they don't bother me. Also, I will say, Mint, if they got rid of rev bots, you, as a PKer that PKs in rev caves, would be affected by that. Because you know how back in the day we used to have a, like, the ecosystem was 
there would be people that killed the green dragons, and then the bad Picares killed the green dragon killers, and then the slightly better mystic Picares killed those bad Picares, and then the big boys with Arims came in and killed those guys. It's kind of shifted now, where the bots are now the green dragon killers. And the guys that you like to fight and kill in the rev caves will be killing those guys. So it's like, if they were to disappear and there's nobody killing those revs, which there would be, but not For as many, sure, it would have 100% an effect. agree. 100% agree about the food chain. I will say, though, I never really, like, like in the beginning, what I was saying is there's never a way where you could ban all the bots. Never. I completely yeah, agree yeah, with yeah. that. No, never never going to happen, especially if technology going the way it is. But it's ridiculous. We don't need this many bots. We there's a, yeah. It's like a 60 to 40% bots versus real players, man. Like at this point, it's devaluing the normal player GP where you go and farm this stuff and it, all these bots are just nonstop sleeping and dumping the items you're risking to bring in the wild. And I'm only talking about the wild because that's all I know, right? Mm -hmm. But you, no, but you it's, go it's out critical there mass, and you're right? risking your there. gear and you're getting all this shit devalued that these bots have like scripts to where they won't die. They see a PK in their combat bracket in a range, they'll walk away and they'll teleport so they don't get that two second delay. You can't catch a tele tele block on some of these bots, dude. There's uh, the RDO bots, you, you, as soon as their scout sees you, they're gone, right? The things they have implemented, they only take from the wild. They don't actually bring in value. Maybe outside of the wilderness, you got these resources that need to come in the game, but when you got high risk versus high re reward content and there's no risk, that's that sucks how for they, everyone. How, how do they what, what could they implement that would help that situation? Because I don't, I don't oh, know. Oh, just off they the top need... of my head, making <laughs> the wilderness single layer is non teleportable, so they can't just insta teleport. But I mean, you know, just having some common sense and adding these, like if you look at a, <laughs> an account stats and see that it's all one, and you got like 30 to 40 million strength XP, and all the dude's doing is non stop revs, right? It should, you shouldn't even need like an algorithm to find that by. You should but, just have some dude just, oh, yeah, here's another. Yo, didn't they update with incredible stats? Didn't they update it the like not very long ago, like a few months ago, where if you're attacking a rev inside of the rev caves, you can't instantly tell it. But that's, that's what I'm thing, saying. Right? They have these things where when they see you at the corner, you log in, they're already sidestepping the teleport. It's it's uh, insane. The implements they the things they have for safety on these bots. Yeah, but you just Some need to log really underneath dumb. them though. Like that's what oh, I would good say. Good luck. Try. Yeah, good luck right? Some bots right will under. die. Some some will still do that, right? It's yeah, I, I, find I, I haven't things. been there. Like, in some ages, are super so. easy. Some are super easy to kill, but that's not all of them, right? I yeah, love the easy I, I ones. Think, to kill. Uh, okay, I think it's I far them. bigger than PvP or wilderness exactly. nowadays. Is is yeah. my point? So I I mean I think like I said, man, for a long time I you know like I just see bots as like the cockroaches, but now they're like really fighting for Everything. spots that a normal player has earned the right to do. You know, which is the bosses, like which which is reaping the rewards. They're really like it's really hitting hard right now. So they really need to step it up because uh, the their current like whatever they were doing before, they need to. Do, it's not enough. They need to do much more. So Matt, now. do you know where earlier well, you were talking about making separate worlds for bots? Is that yeah. something Jagex have done in the past? Yeah. yeah. So so at least some of the bot we moved over to a world. Yeah. So they could effectively, if there was like a big uproar against like all these bots, like we're discussing, they could just throw them into their own worlds, and then yeah. it would kind of yeah. seem like the bot situations um, got better. Your mic's your mic's popping a little bit. Oh, sorry. Maybe. Yeah. Is that yeah. Yeah. a little away from your mic? Yeah. Yeah. Is that, yeah. So like when you're too close, it pops a little bit. You're like eating it. <laughs> I apologize. Sorry. Sorry to <laughs> leave. You sounded good to me, so it's fine. There's a little on my <laughs> my left ear. <laughs> That's kind of crazy that they could do that and just be like, yep, we've yeah. taken care of the bots. Like, they're gone. Yeah, and it's, uh, there's so many solutions for it as well. Because what I'm hearing here is I can't do the content I want to because there's a bot doing it. That for That's sure. an easy solution. That that's could be solved problem. quite easily. They need to do something, I mean, though, is the point. I think that's why we're also a little bit, like, borderline salty is because it's an obvious solution that they have not implemented mm. it's like yo do something holy shit it's been months bro like mm. make it so we can farm I, this content like, ourselves right i really want like you know what i mean i don't want to call out on Jax, you know but like sometimes man this, it gets so bad that like bro like you know do something bro like i'm on fire we're on fire here I'll you know like, what, like one, one of the the best things i ever did for my understanding of the game and what it could become was to leave Jagex. Because I was allowed then, when I was at Jagex, you have 
um, not only your own thoughts, but you have the thoughts of your bosses, you have the thoughts of your teammates, and you have a huge amount of different things impacting what you're trying to do. And when I left Jagex, suddenly that all disappeared. And I was like, I don't have to worry about what my boss thinks because he doesn't give a monkey's about Jagex. So I don't even work for Jagex anymore. Um, I don't have to care about what my colleagues think. I can have my opinions myself, feel comfortable with these opinions and what they are. And it's, it's, it made me feel as if I could, I, I had a much more objective view than when I worked there on what, what, what needs to happen. Um, and that, that to me sort of just opened my eyes. And over the last four years, I, I, I was so frustrated. I'm sitting there going, oh, fucking, I wish I had that time again so I could go and do this stuff, which is blatantly obvious to me now. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but it's you know it is it is it is what it is, um, and you know it's 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 uh, when you're in there when you're in the moment where you've got all of Jagex um, and the weight on your shoulders of the players and the 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 weight on your shoulders of your team you're working with uh, it you, you can't make a good decision it's very difficult very difficult to make a good decision yeah. the back of that so so who does but anyway make- PVP we keep talking about yeah we before should before we get on the PVP. PVP. I wanted to get my thoughts for the blockchain off just real quick. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm really done. No more for me. Okay. okay. I listen. I listen to you. Just, mm-hmm. just. I, say, I just want to list the positives for the blockchain and RuneScape. Mm-hmm. One, obviously, revenue for RuneScape with GP selling. Two, you could put all your items, all your gear into your wallet. I don't know if there's a safer way to do that. Jagex accounts seem pretty safe, but having your own storage and private keys for your items seems to be the safest possible manner. And then on top of that, obviously, for those that don't know, you can track everything on the blockchain. So that means if there was an RWT or selling problem or something, they could find it quite easily with uh, tools. So overall, I love that idea. I'm glad you brought it up. And I just wanted to really quickly just state that there's a lot of positives. I won't get into negatives. We definitely move on to PvP. Just want there's to there's one example I use when, cause again, I talk about the blockchain to my community quite a lot. And of course... As soon as you mention the blockchain, people will go to NFTs. And NFTs are the biggest pile of dog crap in the world. Yeah, I created my own NFT and somebody <sighs> bought one. And my question was like, why the fuck would you buy a picture of me? I mean, what's wrong with you? Um, NFTs just are garbage from how they've been presented. I buy an image for a, a digital image for an amount of money. What hell use does that have? But if we go down to what the blockchain can do, and the yeah. biggest use and the thing that convinces almost everybody I talk to so imagine on the blockchain, you have the name Rice Cup, you have the name Mint Mad Cow, you have the name Rakesy. Yeah, Any game that, that, that ties in to that blockchain will give you that name. You don't have to sign up for it. You don't have to do anything else. You own that name. Um, so I own Real Matt K. No matter what game I go to, I get that name. No one else can take it because I own that name. That is my That's my if they're name. affiliated with the and blockchain, that name right? itself is an mm. NFT, which is really cool, yeah. right? Because yeah, I agree, names, NFTs are yeah. mainly dog shit, but there's obviously a use case beyond dog shit. But does yeah. it? But does it have to like tie into the blockchain? Like, does that game need to be yeah. like yeah. in with it, right? Otherwise, you yeah. could have someone else could have it, but like if you know, not for yeah. I mean, it could an be affiliated a game. There's, there's a hundred, you know, there's a hundred reasons why it doesn't work now. But take ten years down the line, when every, I mean. I, I was talking to MMG about this a couple of days ago. I said, look, if you want to make any game that's going to be successful in five years' time, there's two things you have to have. You have to have Web3, which means you're going to be on the blockchain. You're going to have to have UGC. Without those two things, you're not going to have a successful game that's going to last five years if you make it what's, now. What's UGC? Uh, User-generated content. Okay. Not yes, so. for sure. So yeah, 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 I, those are the two themes that you've been hitting hard. Yeah. I, I they're, 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 the two, they're the directions that the, the whole... Um, you say the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean the whole I the guess. whole gaming industry is going. Yeah. If you yeah. think about Web three, you're not hearing a lot about Web three games right now. But I'll tell you, that every single publisher, every single developer are making a Web three game at the moment. Yeah, um, when GTA I mean, six I, comes out. Yeah, I think that's going to be a landslide. That's going to be like one of those pivotal exactly. moments yeah. where it's like, I'll have to keep an eye out. It was so obvious in retrospect, yeah. and now. Finally, these AAA companies are pushing it to the masses, and that's all that. That's all. That yeah, let's just see how it goes. You know, I'm I'll, here. I'll tell you what. I would. I will guarantee that uh, Fortnite have already got it all implemented. Oh, yeah. They're just waiting for the right time to release it. They've already got it into the Unreal Engine, so that's all Web three uh, active now. Same the with Unity as well. It's yeah, you know, there's a lot of movers and pushers. Yeah. Damn. 
Maybe and I think rare Fortnite because... skins might be retirement. If you have them now, you might like just like CS:GO skins. Imagine trading yeah. a CS:GO skin on the blockchain exactly. as an NFT when it's already going for like the most was two hundred and forty thousand dollar trade this year, and it's on Steam. Imagine that shit on the blockchain, bro. How yeah. much that would go for? Holy Dude, I, fuck! Yeah. I, I I'll played... tell you now. There's um there's there's a great story I have from when I was at GDC, which is the Game Developer Conference this year. And I was just following this. I wasn't stalking this couple. I was just happy to be walking behind them in the same direction. Um, and yeah, they, disclaimer. They, um, they said, <laughs> Context. Oh, yeah, disclaimer. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so I only stalk e-girls, so it's fine. Um, they were, um, they were, uh, they were humble, walking humble. in front of me, and they, they, they sort of turned to each other, and they were like, you know, two years ago, the gaming industry destro- Detroit, uh, destroyed the term NFT. Last year, we destroyed the term metaverse. What are we going to destroy this year? And they both looked at each other and went, AI. So uh, <sighs> AI is going to be a thing we don't talk about after this year. But with NFTs, the technology is still there. The metaverse, the technology is still there and being built upon. AI is going to be there. The technology is going to, make, is, is going to move it forward, which is going to call it a yeah. different thing. And that's, that's so cool. It's so yeah. nice and refreshing to hear. PvP instead, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure yes. your viewers don't want to listen I about just, the games industry. I'm it's trying so to keep lovely, an open though, eye because every time I bring up this shit, I get <laughs> roasted, bro. And I am <laughs> so deep in Web three, so it feels like when I, I exit that kind of community in Web three and come back to the RuneScape boys, yeah, it's just roasting nonstop. But they can't <laughs> stop it, bro. We're just slowly, yeah. gradually going towards that direction. You know, no matter you what. know what it is. It's not that I roast the technological potential of these things i think i just can tell though when people are using these technologies for a quick money making scheme mm, i think exactly that's the thing i wrote anywhere where there's you opportunity know? there's gonna be scams right yeah. just anywhere opportunity yeah. is yeah, exactly. there's gonna be scams it's almost like dmccs Mm-hmm. Yes, that's where the opportunity is. Therefore, the scams are very deep. Very yeah. deep. I usually, you know, if I feel like a lot of people are using whatever it is for, just like on, you know, just just like, you know, like like slimy purposes. Like I, I will have, I will tend to have a more negative opinion mm-hmm. on it. Not not because of the technology. Like I said, it's just because of the people that fucking yeah. ram their booties into it and try to. You know, make use of it in nefarious I'm ways. Hundred percent in agreement with you. Yeah, and that's all you've had from blockchain right now. Currently, yep. it is. That's what why we call I the crypto so bros that are trying to make you know a yep. few million quid super quick. And because like when you explain it to me the way you did in this podcast, I'm like, you know what? It, it really seems like a no brainer in a lot of ways. Like in terms of the the inevitable usefulness in society. Whereas right now, you know, it's always the, it's crazy because these, you know, the most nefarious people, they, they are some of the most clever people, which is kind of sad. They go to, they go hand in. It's always the clever people that ends up taking advantage of these emerging technology, but uses it in a way that gives it a bad I wouldn't rap. say clever, uh, maybe greedy people. Greedy, yeah, sure. You yeah. know, whatever ways to describe them because the they don't deserve any form of compliment. Something which society uh, benefits yeah. from. Yeah, I think I definitely see the trend of where eventually it will be tamed by society versus the greedy, you know, individuals that use it. So, but yeah, so remember... <laughs> probably shouldn't say, which I'm going to say anyway, because why not? Yeah. I regularly get hit up by potential buyers of Jagex um, because they're, they're currently owned by the Carlisle Group. Carlisle Group usually sell every five years when they bought something. So they're, they're probably up for sale in the next 18 months or so. Um, and I've been hit up by multiple people who are potentially buying them. And they asked me what I would do. And uh, the two oh. things I say I would do would be blockchain, uh, UGC. And every oh. single one has gone away with, oh, that fucking makes sense. Um, mm. Hey, when it happens, dude, hit me up. I'll help you help you run the new Jagex, all right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I was just going to give you some money I mean, for giving, I, I just me, hope... giving them ideas. But, you know, there we go. You know, I just hope yeah. it's with the intention of making the game better versus, like, you know, mm. or like just, you know, or helping maintain the longevity of the game, you know? You know how my brain's wired nowadays is that when I see a lot of negativity around something, I instantly think opportunity. And there's a, it's a little bit of a meme, but there was this guy who would travel to places that were like war ridden or just something horrible happened. Cause guess what? The, the, uh, price of the ticket would be very cheap in the hotel. No mm. one wants to go, right? Opportunity always is, is, uh, led by, Ass panic or fear. 
And I know I've been comparing a lot of stuff today. I love comparing stuff because it makes people think <laughs> easier, right? So if we go back to look at the internet, people weren't very fond of the internet. You have uh, like newspaper articles saying this thing's going to die off in a couple of years. And we go back to the automobile, Do you know, do you right? know what year the internet was first created? Uh, it was for the um, the government, but I can't remember, like 1950s maybe, right? Sorry, when? 1950s? 69, 1969. 69, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's still such a long time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? See, before hey. I was born, that's how long ago it was. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're quite young, <laughs> Mr. Mackey. <laughs> I'm only 21, believe it or not. Um, I believe it, for sure. Right, what, what, what was even the topic for PvP? <laughs> what were we... Oh, it was Bounty Hunter. Is that uh, what we're talking that, about? Yeah, well, well, was just the, back, the man. biggest update in five years, bro. We're talking bro. about <laughs> Bounty Hunter. Yeah, what do you guys think of it? Have you guys tried it? I watched it. You watched it? What about uh, you, man? No, uh, some, some so the question bats. I'm going to ask you, right, mm -hmm. for Bounty Hunter, are you still going to be playing it in six months' time? As long as other people are, I'd say yeah. I still haven't played it. I don't know how, if I will. How I see Bounty Hunter, to answer your question, is that I, I feel like it's the foundation and they can build on top of it. So if they don't build things that I want to do, then probably not. But I don't think they're going to keep it the same. Right. But then again, you they look at the PvP arena and it's like it doesn't give you a lot of hope because they did not change that whatsoever after it failed and they made it like a big update. And it's the, like the okay. difference is is people like uh I know no, I can't really say that. I, I think that what they have put into the game for Bounty Hunter this time is very noob friendly. And what I mean by that is the current rule set they have, the the process of getting into fights and stuff, it, it it's very beginner friendly. Like you you know Put it this way, the fact that they've removed overheads firstly removes like an insane level of skill out of the fight completely. And freezes, like, yeah. And freezes too. Like those are two types of control in the fight that have been removed, which has leveled mm -hmm. that playing field to a very mm -hmm. noob friendly thing. That's I don't good. think that Bounty Hunter is cratered toward uh catered cratered. I don't think it's catered towards <laughs> the elite <laughs> PvPers, although I think that they can enjoy it. I think it's more catered to. I mean, they, the they definitely player. get an advantage still, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think it's fun. I think it's a fun, fast-paced way of doing PvP, which is pretty familiar. And you can kind of, even as an elite player that's like pro at PvP, you can kind of just go in there, shut your brain off, and just be like, okay, I'm just gonna kind of have some fun. There's only so much I can do here. So it's not going to drain all of my energy. Like, I don't have to think about overheads. I don't have to think about freeze times and stuff like that. So I think they've done an excellent job of it. I think that it's fun. Um, I think that realistically, they need to continue to work on the rewards because it's only a matter of time before everybody has everything. I'm sure there are people that are almost there now. So it's like, that's one of the big things. Because once you have the rewards, like you're literally only doing it for fun and a little bit of GP along with it. But we know what people are like. They always like to get like a little extra. So I, I think that's the two big problems. They, they just need to keep adding to it. Rewards especially. So why do you guys do PvP? I don't. What do you want to get out of a PvP situation? Um, what what is the context then? Can you elaborate well, on on what you mean by the PvP I, situation? I get the question. Just I know, get the question. But well, for yeah. me, for like a layman okay, here, okay. you know. Okay. It's just so fun. I'm sitting there thinking. Um, so when I think about PvP, I think what's the motivation of an individual to get into a PvP situation? So, um, I've done PvP in um, RuneScape back in 2007. Really, haven't done it since. Um, it was. It was not to get items. It wasn't to get a, a benefit from it. I've done PvP in many other games, um, and it was never to get the stuff from doing PvP. It was about power over somebody else. It was about having a good fight and thinking, yes, I won. That was, that was to me, the, the focus of PvP and the reason behind it. Um, and when I think about what is the ultimate aim of PvP, you want to go into a fight... And you want to, ideally you want to win a fight, but you know, you can't always expect to 100% win a fight because that's just, you know, just unrealistic. Um, but you want to be able to come out of a fight and say, I had a good experience with PvP. I had a good experience with this person. I lost, I'm pissed off that I lost, but I feel as if I can win next time. Uh, I've won this time and I feel as if I really earned that win. And that to me is the motivation for getting into PvP. It is about power over somebody else. It is about winning that battle that you're in 
And if you're not winning it, knowing how you could win it next time. That to me is the, the reason to for PvP. I think the rewards for it are a nice thing, but I don't think that's the main reason. And I'm happy to be told, Matt, you're talking rubbish. Um, many people have told me that over the years, and I encourage people to tell me that. But that, that to me is the motivation for PvP. And when I th- sit there and think about how the wilderness is set out right now, um, and I sit there and think, right, if I'm um, a PvPer, I go into the wilderness, I want to have a fight with somebody. Uh, I find somebody um, uh, getting a clue. I'll kill them. If I'm lucky, I'll get a spade. Um, if I'm unlucky, I won't. Um, and I don't have a great experience because I'll just wail on somebody. I might kill them. They might get away. Um, but I don't have a great experience. The person who's doing the clue doesn't get a great experience because they don't really want to fight anybody else. They just want to get this clue. Um, and that is, that, that's not a great experience for someone to be in. Um, ne- Nobody is getting a good experience from that situation. Anyway, Blur, what do you guys think about what I've just said? Okay. I agree 100%. Uh, the reason why I got into PvP was because I was so originally bad at RuneScape when I first started that mm. it felt like fighting When someone... you first started, don't you mean still are, or was that... <laughs> oh, yo, I'm really absolute bad. trash at PvM for sure, man. I, I completely agree. But knowing that you're trash at a video game like League of Legends or Tarkov makes... For some reason, my sick mind wants to play it more. No matter how shit yeah. I am, I'll get beaten to a pulp, walk away angry. I'll be like, I'm playing next day. I'm playing the next day. And for RuneScape, that's how PvP was for me. I mean, my first Deadman mode, I didn't even know F keys, dude. I, can you imagine Deadman mode, no F keys? You're just getting demolished by Rot the whole time. But knowing that I could progress myself to the point where I could just find someone and there's a very good chance, like nowadays, 90% chance you're going to die if you run into me in the wild and like newbie gear moderate gear if you're in god gear probably not but i'll just take you out and i love taking shit from someone to the point where i want to play every video game full loot pvp i love it tarkov all these games i can go out and outplay somebody due to what i learned and just take just take bro anything from them rush them kill them one hit them i love it and then i don't talk or type like some people do you know they just play with one hand if you get my drift but I just, mm. I love you just sound, You sound sick, someone, bro. Dude. You sound sick in I the know. head. <laughs> I know. I want to take it from them. <laughs> all of the rage, dude, I have built in my life, and now I can just yeah. go up to someone and go, your stuff is mine. Thank I, you. Oh my I God. think, dude, I think what you've just said is a very, I think when it comes to PvP, I think it's a very personal thing. I think there are people that are into PvP, and I think there's people that are not. I think that realistically, if you're going to be into PvP, you have to have somewhat of a competitive nature. If you don't have a competitive bone in your body, like you're probably not going to get on with PvP because the whole point mm. is to try and beat somebody, right? Um, like I, I, I'll tell you my story. So the way I got into PvP was the way I even got into RuneScape was I watched my older brother with one of his friends back in the early 2000s in this place called the Wilderness where they were so fucking excited to be in there and they were like the deeper we go the fucking better the loot is but we can lose everything so it was like that kind of like adrenaline of like you know risking it all to try and get something from it so there's that um that was kind of like my first kind of introduction into runescape and to be honest Mm -hmm. with you for the first like over god pretty much all the way until runescape 3 came out the only thing in the game i cared about was pvp i did not Mm. care about anything outside of pvp literally nothing new skill does it affect me in pvp do i need it nope not doing it like not interest just on one thing but that was because like for me as a teenager like this this is gonna sound a little bit sad but this was this was old rakesy this was me back in my teenage years i wasn't very good at much right Back when I was a teenager, I didn't have a lot of direction. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I kind of that sounds was like, like all of us are teenagers. <laughs> <often>. yeah. <laughs> but, just, but, but through all of that shit, through like not knowing what to do, not knowing what I, you know, anything, there was one thing that I was very good at, and that was yeah. killing people in the wildy, <laughs> and it made me feel fucking good, and that's what made me continue doing it. But now it kind of got to a point where I got over the point of like you know, sort of, like, expressing my anger onto others. It was less about, like, an ego thing, and then it kind of turned into more of, like, a skill-based thing. It's like, okay, I know that I'm better than this person. Like, put it this way, if I fight somebody now in the wilderness, and I fucking destroy them, 
I don't get that much enjoyment out of that. If I fight somebody who's at a similar level to me, and I have a fucking good fight with that person, whether I win or die, I will enjoy that, loss or win, ten times more than the easy fight. The easy fight bores me. It's like, I want to actually have, like, I want to have my skills tested versus somebody, if that makes sense. So it's like, for me, it's mm. kind of, the reason why I enjoy PKN has evolved over time, but then you're talking to somebody who's PK'd since the dawn of fucking RuneScape. So it's like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I would say I'm like that veteran level of PK. I have a very different mindset to somebody who does it like casually or hasn't done it before, if that makes sense. That's a really interesting point because um, the way I look at PvP is if you want to have a good PvP experience, you need people to have PvP with. And currently, there are very few people joining the PvP community, if anybody, which yeah, means your PvP community is shrinking. That means you're only going to fight the same people over and over and over again. And I watch these, um, uh, I watch Oda Block every now and then, and he will go out and he'll fight people, and it's the same names, and he'll know who they are, they'll know who he is, they'll know how they fight. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's interesting and fascinating, but to be honest, you want to have lots of people to PvP with. Mm -hmm. And PvP, uh, the, each individual has a different level of PvP and a different level of people, PvP they want to do. I really enjoyed. Uh, Ranger Pures. I, I had a Ranger Pure back in 2005. I absolutely loved it. Um, you don't get to, to get to that stage right now. But when I think about PvP, I think, how do we get more people involved in PvP in a situation where they can find the level of PvP that they're, co they're comfortable with? And it might not yeah, be right. end level where you're doing, you know, quadruple switches every, you know, three ticks and uh, faffing around and doing all the stuff you normally do. It could be that I want a simple PvP experience, and it sounds fascinating that... that um, Bounty Hunter is, seems seems to be addressing this. Uh, well, you can have a simplified PvP experience um, and do that. Um, so there's, there's multiple changes I would like to make to the game in order to Im improve PvP. And again, going back to what I was saying, leaving Jagex and allowing me to think about this more objectively um, gives me uh, allows me to have these ideas. And again, they might work, they might not work. There's no data to back it up with just my opinion on what I've seen and what, what I, what I think is happening. You know, I, I think that trying to get new players into runescape is a very tough challenge uh we had mod swain on here a while back his new job mm. is advertising to try to get new players and i think yeah. the same can be said for pvp i, I personally even harder <laughs> yeah i i personally believe that and there's a lot of pvpers that push back on this a bit because they say any update that takes potential pkers out of the wilderness is a bad update i don't agree with that i think that mm a way that you can get players and it's a tested and proven method of working a way to get new players into pvp is to create pvp i'm a big fan of mini games where mm. you don't necessarily risk anything other than your own time so last man standing is a good example of that mm. you don't risk anything going in there but you're slightly rewarded at the end and you also gain something from it I think if they were to make more mini games that are fun of nature with a competitive edge to it, I think that could potentially get people in. Um, and like we were talking about earlier, right? We're talking about making separate servers. We spoke about Tarkov briefly. Like, do you, have you ever played Tarkov, Matt? Do you know uh, what Tarkov no. is? You've never played it. I okay. do know what it is, yes. Yeah. Okay. So it would effectively be like, it, it's effectively a battle royale. You know what a battle royale mm. is. So effectively a mini game like that for runescape that's a pvp battle royale where you basically spawn in and you're given like a loadout that you have like you're not losing it from your bank but if you die you yeah. lose it right and if you survive you can bring stuff out of that raids or out of that instance and then you can keep that stuff and then you've got better stuff to go in with again etc and you like build mm. yourself up so okay, I, I would love to see some more like fun with competitive edge mini games and I think that where people don't need to go in and risk their stuff up front, I think that's probably as enticing as you can get for new players to come in because they know I've got nothing to lose giving this a shot. It, you know? Yeah, I, I agree because, you know, we've we've unfortunately had to, or fortunately, unfortunately, how you look at it, develop a culture where losing, uh, you know, items and stuff is just a big turnoff nowadays, you know? Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was like normal, you know, you lose all your entire bank, cool, but like, you know, now, now we're, you know, we're way past that, right? People just do not like losing, like, like, I, I, when I was watching, like, uh, people do BH for the most part, right? Like, watching, like, some friends do it, most of the time, when they kill someone, they only get, like, 100k, <laughs> you know, like, people are not, 
they're not trying to risk a whole lot you know they don't they don't yeah. want to risk more than like 200k even right not even a mystic set you know people be wearing like salad ropes to the wilderness just to pk you because they really don't even want to want to freaking risk 100k it's yeah. insane so 100 percent. oh yeah but like if they want to get more people in pvp the, yeah the they only, need more of that the only trouble i will say with bh and i really hope the jagex do stay on top of this and i i, I do think they will just because this is the first time they've done a pvp update and there's been issues and they fucking hot fixed it that day and the next day mm. instead of waiting until next thursday or whatever the update is they actually did that for this so they've actually like paid attention to this update i'm sorry i'm on a bit of a tangent but i think the only concern i have once people have collected all of the things they can buy from the shop does the mini game then become not fun because i'm not working towards any of that stuff and I think that's something that needs addressing. I think that the way they've done it is probably the only way they can do it to prevent boosting. If you don't know, you can't buy anything out of that shop except from like the uh, the anglerfish super restores, which is really low tier stuff that you can get everywhere else in the wilderness anyways. That's good. That's hopefully going to prevent boosting, although there probably will be boosting because there's people that like to boost for collection logs. So there'll be people that need to get like every single item for the collection log. Mm. Um, but there's no monetized incentive there to boost so it's definitely a good way to go about it but i do worry that once people have got all of the items is it still going to be fun to just do it for the sake of it and i don't know what the answer to that is so there's two things i would change in the game in order to make pvp more accessible um the first one would be to remove all pvm content from the world okay um one of them being is uh, like i said earlier if you're out there for pvm you don't want to have a fight if you're out there for pvp the pvmers aren't, aren't that much of a challenge so you're not getting the experience you want to rake see like you said you're not mm -hmm. getting the good fights the pvmers are getting pissed off you've got two people getting pissed off at each other it creates that negative influence that all pvp is bad which is you know some of the things like that 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 relationship needs fixing and that's the way i would fix that straight away at the same time, I would make one other change to the wilderness, which is when you go into it, you can change your stats downwards. So you can't make them go upwards, but you can make them go downwards. So if I am a player who wants to go and try to do a pure, this will piss off every pure that spent hours making their accounts. Um, but bear with me. Um, if, uh, if I can decide that actually I want to try PvP and I want to try a uh, range of pure, so I'm going to just reduce my... Uh, um, uh, defense to one and try a range of pure obviously there'll be um, something that needs to happen to make sure you get access to the right equipment and all that sort of stuff um, be sorted out but what that allows me to do is to go actually i want to try a type of account that makes sense to me and try and find my place in pvp that i enjoy mm. and if i look at um, when i did a study on who actually takes part in pvp um guess 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 the the the, the largest type of account that tries PvP. Uh but, but uh, <laughs> I, I would guess like I don't know, probably like what's the largest amount of players? Like mid tier players, like level eighties or something? Nineties mm. maybe? I don't know. Yeah, all Zerk accounts. Zerk accounts by far the biggest okay. biggest PvP. -er. Um you had slight blip at end level, but end level is just such a, a laborious way of PvPing. It's just not exciting unless you really know what you're doing. Mm. Um you get a whole a big spike at the beginning, which is your level tens um going out to the wilderness for the first time and ice ice whatever it is, ice blast, ice fire blast, wave, and ice, stuff like that. Whatever it is. So yeah, yeah. That sort of thing, trying to gank people there. Um other than that is Zerkers. And to me, that said, you know, PvP isn't an end game piece of content. PvP is a journey from the first moment you walk into it um, as a uh, um, as, as the first first almost straight off Tutorial Island type of account, then all the way through the different pures you can have up to Zerka, where it seems to be most prevalent, and then continue on to that up to end level PvP um, content. So it's a journey. It's not a specific point across that. And by allowing people to change their levels down rather than up, because obviously you don't want to give people the ability to suddenly make themselves 99 and walk into the wilderness, um, allow them to mm. change it down, then you can say, right, I am a player who um, I've got a decent account. I know I can make all the equipment that I need to make to be a good um, uh, range of pure. 
and therefore my losses are practically nothing, um, I can then go and turn into a Ranger Pure, walk into the wilderness. Do I enjoy being a Ranger Pure? Yes, no. Do I enjoy being a Mage Pure? Do I enjoy being a Zerker? Do I enjoy being some sort of hybrid thing? Do I suddenly have the ability to play around with stats until I find a really cool thing um, mm. off the back of that? And that yeah. way you are encouraging people to go into the wilderness at a risk level that's acceptable to them and get them to find the place that they feel comfortable and actually start creating that journey to where they want to be and where they find comfortable within the wilderness. Yeah. So I... Um, dude, like I said, I've done PKM for a long time. I kind of treat the wilderness as like the holy battlegrounds. Like to me, personally, I don't think we should touch the wildy. I think it's an ancient relic. It's a beautiful thing and we shouldn't fuck with it. But I do like what you're saying about the stats. I think that if they were to give you that ability in like a mini game, for example, I think that would be great. Um, inside the wilderness... I, I it's just it's too much of an ancient relic i think i i feel like a lot of people would there's not anything necessarily bad about what you said but i just i like the way it is but that's just like a personal thing yeah to pick apart what you said like not having like clue scrolls or pvm it does make somewhat of sense right if you don't want to be affected by the wilderness but uh, i do think that the wilderness should have wilderness content right wilderness bosses that drop things for the wilderness maybe wilderness mm. clues that you do in the wilderness it should be an adventure that you partake risk versus reward you, you got to get people out there to do something and you got to get people to kill those people right that's the food chain that you have to build for pvp to be successful no one's just going to be sitting out there waiting to get attacked okay right. so how I about this then, right mm. so the only content you get from the wilderness is pvp related content and by that i mean Every stat, every item gets changed to have two levels of stats. You get a PvP stat, you get a PvE stat. Um, that way you can make overpowered PvE content for things that work in PvE and stuff that isn't going to impact PvP. Um, and you get unique PvP equipment as well. Um, so, for example, your Dragon Dagger uh, may... Um, oh, that's a really bad choice, actually, isn't it? Okay, let's choose something. Um, Abyssal Whip, right? Um, Abyssal Whip does not have a special attack that works in PvE at all. It's uh, it binds people or something. Doesn't it? it reduces run energy or something? Yeah, yeah nothing uh, good. Absolutely nothing useless good. for PvE at all. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, so a, better, a better special attack while in PvP it has a different special attack. So each item has two two levels of stats. That way you can make sure that you can create stuff purely for PvE and purely for PvP. Um, and in the wilderness, that's where you get the items which allow you to have good PvP stuff. So it could be you have bosses in there, but they only drop stuff that's relevant to PvP. So if Perfect. you're in PvE, then... Yeah. yeah, that's what I would like to see for sure. Yeah, in right. The future... Didn't you have that idea? Why yeah, they, like, they just said something about... Two different stats? They just said something about, like, the engine doesn't, like, let that allow it or something. But I'm we sure they can the make it. Yeah, I'm sure they can it. make it work, man. Yeah. So again, this, this boils down to technology. If technology is not yeah. good enough, it's only that Jagex can change that. They, they can yeah. do that if they decide it's important enough, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, if they should, because yeah. eventually it's going to have to happen. I mean, we're already at the point where things are like one shot close, you know. <laughs> as long as we keep. Go on. I was just going to say, as long as I'm we a... keep the. Sorry. Man, you go, <laughs> man. You go. All right, all right. I'll power through it. As long as we keep the risk versus reward aspect to where you're going to the wild or you're getting something that could benefit you, maybe cash wise or in the wilderness, and then someone comes out and they could take it from you, as long as that maintains the same, right? If they add add ons, they just keep that recipe for success in the wilderness, we're going to be just fine. I, I think right. the reason why it was suffering for so long was because we didn't have anything to do. For so, yeah, there's while. just nothing fresh. The, in the thing while. I'm really curious about. What what's the idea behind removing all the PVM content from the wildy? Just out of curiosity, like where 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 would that lead to in your mind? So, it so already it's happened, it's... right? Yeah, it already happened. The dragon pick is now uh, outside the wild. Yeah, I mean, what do we what what can but you get in I, the wilderness think... that you? wouldn't help you outside the, of maybe the, like the rings i like think the, that matt the said that rings. he was talking about removing all of the monsters right mm -hmm. or like the yeah, so, so okay so when i look at it there's when we talk about the experience that we had when um before when you, if you're a pvp you want to have a good fight with somebody yeah if you're fighting somebody who's not geared up for pvp so i'm a clue hunter for example i have four items on me um but you don't even need that now do you? you need two items basically to be a clue hunter in the wilderness these days yeah. Um, all I'm going to do 
is uh, go and do my clue and get out of there. If you kill me, you're not having a great experience because you're just wailing on me. I'm not having a great experience because I'm not getting done what I want to get done. Um, and no one's no one's particularly happy with that. So it's a really bad experience for both okay. sides of the, the, the so, coin there. And yeah. It's removing that because what that mate does to me as a PVE, I'm like fucking PVPers. They're all bastards. They just want to kill me for absolutely no reason what for, forever. Mm. And you're sitting there as a PvP uh, going, oh, fucking PvE is always in the wilderness. I don't get a decent fight with anybody. Um, so, and that, that interaction is poor on both yeah. sides. So, so the only problem I would say with that is, firstly, it's very specific to me that I like to have good fights. There's probably mm. a lot of people that have no problem at all on wailing on noobs, and they probably get a lot of enjoyment out of that. So, like, I'm just saying from my personal satisfaction, I like a good fight, but there's a lot of people that for whatever reason, they'll like destroying noobs just because they get some sick satisfaction, right? There's a lot of people like that. Um, the problem with it is that pretty much the only places in the wilderness now that are hotspots for PvP are because of the PVM monsters that are there. So, like, the Rev Caves, for example, right? It's like, take the Revenants out of there, it's like no pvp is going to go there they're probably just mm. going to end up what would happen is i had imagine all of the pvpers that do that would probably just then fight each other and it would be whichever place is the closest to the bank so it could be that mage bank becomes popular but probably not it'd probably be like edge because we've think, got eight pools now i think you've done a pretty good job balancing the pvm and pvp in the wilderness nowadays because they are they have anti-skull so that way mm. You can actually bring some decent gear and and kill people and fight back without like you know getting tricked yeah. into. Oh, it'd be control. Ferox. Sorry, there's a, there's a lot of really cool mechanics that are already implemented. Where what Matt said is is already true, right? Like if you're doing a clue, you got a clue box. You don't risk anything. You just get a clue box and you you go about your day. And uh, or you can just drop the clue when you die. That, that's what yeah, yeah. Doing. There's a lot of and obviously yeah. it's like if they want clue spots out of the wild, so be it. Bring wilderness clues in. That does sound fun. Yeah, but yeah it's like items that you need to unlock on your iron man you can go get a dragon pick somewhere else right yeah yeah there's there's all of these things that already implemented i think to, yeah to make i think they've really exactly how yeah. you're talking about i, I think completely but it's about there i i might be i don't know maybe you can correct me if i'm wrong here but i would say the wildy is kind of looking pretty healthy at the moment would you say that's minus fair? the bots the bots, Other than minus the bots. The bot. farming bots <laughs> yeah. yes the and bots it's gonna and get healthier nice, yeah. with mod goblin and mod uh mod mate yeah cooking up some mm -hmm. fire. so something i would love to see is i'd love to see them and as they've just done expansions to the ferox enclave which is supposed to be like the center of the wilderness the hub right it's like it's like the village inside of the the, the wildy so it's like they've just mm. added bh to it and i love that because now you've got bounty hunter and you've got lms like directly opposite each other and it's like i think that they should just keep on expanding to that you know whether that's like mini games or w whatever they decide to put in there i think that's i think it's really nice to be honest and i'd like they to have see a really good foundation bro right now like i'm so yeah. excited for what they're building on top of everything they've already built and then you got bounty hunter kind of like the trojan horse taking noobs that don't even want a pvp and then just throwing them into that experience maybe they they set foot deeper in the wild i it's finally they're just connecting the puzzle pieces to make a really good pvp experience yeah and I, the reason why people are so distraught lately is because the last two years have not been that way. And now I keep telling people, hey, do you believe in the JMods? The Winter Summit was fire. All these things, the blogs have been great. It's been very deeply delved. They've been taking everyone into consideration. Let them cook. Yeah. And people just got to let them cook, bro. Everything so far has been solid. If you main RuneScape and you main PvP, these are things you want to see. And if you want to see other stuff, Reach out to Mate, reach out to Goblin, mm. give them some ideas, dude. They have a Discord open for sailing. They are very open to taking your opinions into consideration. I, Everything I, we want right now is going really, really well. Yeah, that RuneScape yeah. Tarkov be honestly sounding kind of cool. It would be mm. amazing, bro. I, I think because to hammer brings... down on that point, they, mm. they just need to add more stuff that is basically no risk, but there's a process of like, earning stuff within that mini game so there's no upfront risk to participate in it and there's like a reward at the end like basically the blueprint for lms is perfect like the way that you can just go in there you don't use your own stuff everything's given to you replicate that but do it in a different way because like the trouble with lms lms is perfect for what it is it is really a splendid piece of content but it is very at the core of it competitive you're just there to beat somebody 
right? That's it. So, like, why not have a mini game that has that in it? but it's not necessarily the only focus. It's like maybe you can gather stuff, maybe you can find something that's rare, or you can even kill like some sort of PvE, PvM monster inside of it, and then you try to escape with the loot, right? And then you can like build your bank within this mini game, and then you can use that loot to then maybe go hunt other players, you know? It's like, I, I just think that that system works of allowing, it allows people that are brand new, because we're talking about getting new players into the game, it allows new players who don't want to risk their stuff to have like a step in and just experience it and it's like they might find some enjoyment they might not it, it's just one of those things but it wouldn't so hurt. you want like a more complex lms pretty much like you want more like a bigger map more rules more right. collectibles, so to, to, longer I'll, map times. i'll, I'll just i'll I, just I give you cool. i'll give you my idea right so matt here's here's the scenario this is how the mini game <laughs> this is how the mini game would effectively work take the entire wilderness okay that's your map okay so you go into a lobby let's say there's 20 people that are in per game so you're gonna get teleported to a random spot on that map okay you're gonna you're gonna spawn on the map on your own and those other 20 people are going to be scattered around the entire wilderness. So you shouldn't spawn next to anybody. And they can change the mm. numbers however they want to. And then what your objective is going to be is effectively to survive. And on the way of surviving, you have to find somewhere you can escape, which will be located somewhere on the other side of the map. So say, for example, you spawned at Mage Bank. Like, you could extract uh, down by the... Um, what's it called the volcano on the opposite side of the map like that's where you need to get to in order to get out and in the process of doing so you can run into players you can run into places where you can find loot that you can loot and maybe get better gear get better resources weapons and so forth and um effectively once you get out you can then store all of that stuff and uh you can choose whether you want to go in on another one where you go in with a free preloaded outfit that you're given or you can go in and in your player player geared and owned account which is stuff that you've mm. taken from that mini game and then you can effectively do as you please whether that's you know gathering resources or killing other players there's going to be benefits to all of that but the point is it's not completely focused on the just you spawn in you instantly fight the person because that's what lms is and it's perfect but it's all we've got so what i'm saying is it'd be nice to have like some varieties to that for pvp you know so it gives people something a little bit different maybe something that's like more fun than competitive you know yeah no, that's, that's quite interesting so it's more of a more of a um ability to avoid people as much as it is to to fight people so a lot more one-on-one -on -one combat so you avoid somebody it'll be one person rather than yeah rather than kill somebody and immediately get ganked by somebody else yeah and, and like quite interesting so, so like with the game that I'm basing it off is a game called Tarkov, and before mm. you load into the map, and Tarkov's effectively that, but with guns. Before you load into the map, yeah. you can talk to NPCs that give you quests. It could be a quest to, you know, get yourself mm. some healing gear, and it's like you need to find healing gear and bring it outside of the raid and survive, and then you can trade that in for XP or, in RuneScape's case, gold, maybe upgrades for armor and so forth. And yeah, that's yeah. effectively what you're doing, and you're leveling your account up. So you're getting this sense of progression while you're also getting stuff out of those raids. So it's like you're mm. building your account up and up and up. So it's like you could effectively do the mini game and just try to avoid and escape players. And you could perfectly well do that. Like no problems at all. It doesn't need to just be, I need to fight this person in front of me and I need to defeat them. Because that's, that's all yeah. we really have right now, you know? Yeah, no, that's interesting. I mean, maybe there's there's a way of doing it which allows you to do multiple things so instead of having allows you to choose the size of the world you want to be in and the amount of people yeah. so maybe it is you know i want to do um the entire wilderness for 20 people or i want to do just um i don't know the the black knight's castle for uh, black knights or dark knights dark knights castle isn't it in the wilderness mm -hmm. dark knights castle with 100 people and everyone's suddenly rammed in together and yeah. you get to choose that so you can you can do that and then you we could i mean one of the cool things about um, what happens in RuneScape is they are able to see everything that happens. So even if it is a case that um, you give these options to people and they suddenly select, you know, ninety percent of people choose the same option, then suddenly you get a whole bunch of information saying this is what people enjoy doing. Um, so some, something like that might be a might be a thing. Yeah, I mean but, the the options are kind of limitless with it to be honest. Um, 
But I mean, I don't know. I just feel like there, there's, there's that they could do to it. I also wouldn't be opposed to a expansion. What, what do you think mm. of the expansion idea that came up in the? Um, it wasn't the Winter Summit. It was the one before that. Mint. Do you remember what it was called? It game was Blast. a game jam. Game jam. That's it. Game jam. I have no idea what it is. Did you not see the expansion uh, so, for that? No. Okay. Near Mage Bank, they want to create, they call it the Bridge of Fate, that bridges past into the water. And then there's going to be this big island with activities that I'm not going to go all around. But at, at, once you pass into that part, combat does not matter. It's supposed to be a lot more rewarding. And I think there's also a PvP village to the left of it that you can yeah. do certain events. And I believe they're, they want to bring Revs Multi somewhere past there as well. Mm -hmm. So to me, the the whole thing about PvP is understanding why people people want to PvP. To me, there's a whole bunch of a there's a hundred ideas that people could come up with to do PvP content, and some of it will work, some of it won't work. And to me, I mean the the issue I really had with when Bounty Hunter was first suggested to me, you know, five years ago when I was still at Jagex, um, and I was like, no, we're not going to do Bounty Hunter because I don't think that solves the underlying issue of pvp why do people pvp what's the understanding behind that and is pvp now the same as um what people want to do in the future so um people pvp now for a very different reason they did five years ago and a very different reason for they did 10 years ago very different reason for what they did 15 years ago and talking to you rake so you are very much somebody who understands pvp how you want to do it yeah um but do new players want to do it the same way and that's the bit that needs to be understood. I've got my opinions on that, and I think I've come up with ideas that I think will help do that. But um, I think if PvP is going to get more prevalent, there's going to get a lot more people involved in it and become a core part of the game once again, um, it's got to change massively. And just additive um, content updates is not going to change that. I think PvP has to fundamentally change and fundamentally allow people to... Uh, uh, achieve their um, or get their motivations or uh, get their, the emotions they want out of PvP, which I don't think it does right now. Mm. Uh, and that is that that that's the thing. I mean, I, I look at this content and I look at you know, the stuff that's coming out. I'm like, yeah, it's great. You know, it may well work for a little while, but the fundamental PvP thing I think isn't right. And I think why people PvP now um, is very different to how it used to be. And trying to arc to ah oh, this is what um, bounty hunter was when did bounty hunter first come out 20 2009 something like I think that it was 2008 i think it was 2008. 2008 so something that came out 15 years ago yeah and trying to recreate that is like uh, people aren't the same sort of people no they're people not. don't don't want to do the content for the same sort of thing i mean i could be just drastically wrong and people are like yeah fucking i'll have what i had in 2008 i'll be happy with that i don't know if that's true um, and I think people play get games for different reasons these days. I think people mo people's motivations are different these days. And I think just additive content and tweaking content is not going to solve the problem. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I mean, I hate to be a Debbie Downer. I would imagine in two months' time there will not be a lot of people doing um, uh, doing bounty hunter. Yeah, uh, probably not. I, think I, that's I hope fair. I'm wrong. I really do hope I'm wrong. Mm. But I I think it will be another thing that's been done added to pvp and hasn't solved the problem you just yeah. need like a an exciting focal point to enter the wild no matter what the cost honestly risk yeah. versus reward if it's exciting to go do it'll bring noobs that it'll, it'll bring everyone out to go mm. do it and uh, you know the best person wins just so, like how pvp should be i so the way i i feel quite strongly about this is that i i agree with what you're saying um i think that people need more opportunity to interact with pvp in a way that is different from what we currently have and that's where uh, I... that's true i think it's in a way that they're comfortable with which might be what okay. we already have yeah um, but, but i don't direct them towards that right point i don't think that what we currently have there's like an easy access point aside from lms i think lms is mm. that i think that is the easy agree, access agree, point yeah. but i think the problem with lms is that you immediately go into a game where you're expected to fight somebody and do a million things at once because it's a hybrid fight and it's not yeah. noob friendly. So I completely uh, agree. Yeah. yeah. So, so the way that I look at it is like we need another instance that's like that that gives that player maybe 
a less intense combative like instant encounter you where know... it can be something a little different because that's all lms is it's brilliant but it's just completely competitive and the thing is if you're somebody and this is most people if you've never done pvp you step inside of lms you get absolutely destroyed by somebody it's not you know, i did kill somebody once in lms i was very proud of myself <laughs> you know you what go. i was thinking i i'm i don't know exactly everything that that came on in the last like five ten minutes but you know how like oftentimes when it comes to pv pvm right like the the guides are so flushed out nowadays that you know the guys that people make where they can like rank the bosses like you know bosses that are designed clearly for beginners bosses are designed clearly for like mid-level players they should really try to you know jack should really try to um streamline that like flow you know for pvp right like mm. you said maybe they should make something like lms except it's way simpler right to kind of like start off that journey i just think you know, it needs to be you know I, mean? I, I just feel like there needs to be a way to progress which yeah, isn't exactly. directly one-on-one -on -one competitively and mm. i feel like that has to be in it because it wouldn't be pvp without it uh, but there has I mean, to like... be that like, like real quick so like think back to the mini game stealing creation the reason why stealing creation was so fucking popular was for a few reasons but one of those reasons was that you were in a pvp zone and you could be attacked but there were ways to avoid it right you could hide inside a fucking cloud while the guy was outside with barrage and like his little knife right it's like so it gave you that encounter with pvp and it also gave you the option to uh, like interact with it or kind of hide away from it and then you'd have your turn so it's like it wasn't just like okay here you go here's your fight and you got to fight to the death it was like there were layers to it there were other things that were happening there was depth to that mini game that made it enjoyable outside of it just being competitive and we don't have anything like that right now for pvp so uh, i mean i think we do we have like soul wars and all those other mini games that involve combat but not a hundred percent combat you know okay that's what i think more so like i think more so they they probably just need to really like hit the you know hit heavy when you like start out playing an account that like you are aware that like there's these la like there's like a progression ladder to pvp you know mm -hmm. like let's say lms is not necessarily beginner friendly i i wouldn't i i would I would argue it's not quite beginner friendly because of course there's a lot to it, right? There's prior item clicking, um, you know, everything, right? Just like getting attacked randomly by people. Bro, it is the it, definition they, they should of being definitely... like, it's the de dude, it just makes me think, you see that meme recently? It's not a meme, it's like a TikTok of this lady. There's like a little child, she's like a toddler at the side of the pool and she's like smiling at her. And then as soon as she looks over, she fucking like dunks her in the deep end. That's what LMS is, dude. You got a <laughs> yeah, manager exactly. inventory, it's you a got little a manager too, switch too crazy. and you've got a fucking prey correctly and do your barrages. It's like, yeah, bro, I... it's everything instantly. Yeah, I think what <laughs> LMS has right is that it's free, you know? It's amazing, so what they, by the way. What I, they I really need to do, piece of content. What, it's just I, in my opinion, new player yeah. friendly. Yeah, exactly. In my opinion, what they should do is like, you, you know, when you start off the game, a lot of new players, they get they get really lost, right? Like, especially when you're older, you're kind of like, what's the point of this game? But like, they've lately uh, created like the, what do you call it? The uh, the assistance thing, where it tells you kind of like, what, what, what yeah. are some things you should be doing, right? They should really try to kind of implement that in a way where it also kind of like, helps you learn about the three kind of like core things about this game, right? Like the skilling, the the PVMing, uh, you know, the the PVP, right? And then what they need to do is probably build upon what they already have, right? Like let's say LMS is kind of like the mid to high level kind of like PVP mini game. They really need to make something where it's kind of like free to play PKing, right? Except mm -hmm. it's more, you know, uh, uh, kind of like compact like LMS where people can go in, but like you only have like one style. Right, it's more of a you just click the person. You might incorporate a special attack, and you eat food. I think I think that as, as simple as that yeah. would probably get people a lot more comfortable. You know, easier to like because I think the biggest complaints about LMS I've noticed throughout the years is that like, um, you know, I can't switch fast. I can't keep up with people. Um, you know, there's just too many things going on. Right, like you know, they they really need a way where people can in a more control fight where it's simpler you're, so you're people basically can like describing free-to-play bounty hunter which i think they're gonna do 
And I think that would be a yeah, good Yeah, they idea. really need to do, do something like that. And they also need to streamline it so that it's easy for people to understand, like, okay, if you want, like, an easy, you know, like, beginner uh, PvP, here's this. You should try this. Uh, you want more advance? You should try this. You know, like, it, you, you get what I'm saying? They don't really have that. Right now, it's just a random, loose assortment of PvP things. But nobody fucking knows like from a new perspective what is kind of like the way to go like how do you start you get what yeah. i'm saying like what is like that activity that like would help you build you know there's none there is none right now it's just like here you can do this or that but like nobody knows what is easier or harder but like they're all predominantly much more higher gapped you know yeah. right most people come into this game barely understanding how to use a fucking mouse you know for goodness sakes right you know what I'm saying? They're like, oh. Oh, I can't click. That's oh, a bit hard. I wait, I can't use keys? Like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we got to teach them how to just click first, you know? So, like, you mm -hmm. know, give them a mini game where it's just click food, right? Click on your opponent. Yeah. Maybe click on a special attack. Dude, every, every, uh, everything you're saying can tie into my idea so easily, bro. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. We, we do need to get manked on at some point because... Yeah, they really need to do that. We haven't had him in a long time. The last time he came on, he said that he got the job, so... It'd be yeah. interesting to have a catch up, but anyways. I think they do need to systemize PvP like you know from tier to tier, so that way when people get in on it, like they make the new account, they're like, oh, okay, so this is like beginner PvP, so I can try that out, and then they're like, yeah, I'm actually killing somebody for once, you know. Then they build up the confidence and learn mm -hmm. how to click better or things like that, you know. I think that's what they need, man. For I sure. think that would be. Chris Archie had a good idea talking to him back in the day. Mm -hmm. He said it should be an NPC that teaches you all the individual skills. You go to a different NPC to learn the next skill you need to PvP. Yeah, they were talking about a rat boss with that expansion oh, from yeah. uh, the game jam thing. It was a rat mm -hmm. boss that could range melee and like uh, barrage you and stuff. Um, but I, I don't know what's happened with that. I think that would be. Um, did you say a rat boss, as in? Yeah, it's a rat. A giant rat it's boss. literally a rat that has like a, a fucking wizard's hat with like a bow. <laughs> it like riding like a horse, dude, or something. Oh, like, was it, like, no, it was like, a rat. It was riding a rat, dude. It's so like rat. Jed, then, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, <laughs> yeah. Oh my haircut? god! Can you imagine? <laughs> Right, listen, boys. We've been going for three hours now. We've had Jesus. man for yeah, three I think we've... hours, boys. My goodness, we're honored. Be four hours. <laughs> we're honored. <laughs> we're right. honored. I am honored. I'm. Matt, a, I have gained a lot of insight today. It's Thank been you. a pleasure. Thank it's been a pleasure having you. Oh, on, I really man. enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there yeah. any any shout outs you want to give? Anything at all? Um. 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 I've got, no. Twitch.tv forward slash musical Matt, talents. Matt yeah, yeah, real, real, real Matt K. If you want to follow me on Twitch, I'm always streaming on there. And oh, actually, that's a good point. Um, so, one of the things I do on Twitch is I, uh, I uh, talk about sort of old things that happened, old stories that happened uh, in my time at RuneScape and other times as well. So, you're always more than welcome to join me on there. I've currently got 84 individual stories about stuff that's happened in, uh, in, uh, in my life, which are quite entertaining. So, feel what free to. Nice. And, uh, and uh, join us there. Um, yeah, follow me on Twitter if you like, but you probably already do. So you know, whatever. Ooh. Yeah, link in the <laughs> link in the description. God, I wish I could say that. Follow. Please follow. Yeah, him. My Twitter you know, name I, is I got weak. what fifty six thousand followers. Yeah. So you know. yeah, I just, yeah. I just he's saw that more. like fucking mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Fifty five thousand yeah. followers. That is insane. Matt Mac K. Uh, you know, that's all. That's how I always think of him. You know, dude, he, his presence <laughs> is unparalleled, man. In RuneScape, he'll never be forgotten. You know, never. Yeah. Never, never. Pre right. Appreciate that, mate. Appreciate it. Link in the description. Follow his socials for sure. Check him out. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Mm hmm. Okay. Bye. Cool.